after getting off to a red-hot 2-0 start, including a victory at Arizona, the Utah Blaze cooled off a bit with a tough loss in Nashville. Smoker again up high to Kenny Higgins. He gets away! Touchdown, Nashville! Tonight, the Blaze get a chance to heat back up. But standing in their way is the versatile quarterback Michael Bishop and the Grand Rapids Rampage. Can the Blaze slow down the Rampage? It's game time, and Blaze football is next on KJAZ. Welcome you into the Energy Solutions Arena for Blaze football. After two weeks on the road, the Blaze are back and thrilled to be here tonight, taking on the Grand Rapids Rampage, the team that comes in at one and two. Dave Fox along with Alema Harrington, but a new look Rampage as they acquired former Kansas State quarterback and Heisman runner-up Michael Bishop, and this kid can be explosive with his arm and his feet. Uh, Bishop played uh, a few plays last week, was five for eight, threw for a touchdown, but it's not his arm. This guy can run the ball. Watch this. He'll run you oh. over if you get in his way. Bishop, a lot like Michael Vick, runs the ball well, not necessarily the best passer in the game, and he holds the record for the arena football for rushing in the game. Had a 100 yards, in fact, from the game you're watching right now. Yeah, only player to ever rush for 100 yards in a single game. Now on the other side of coast, George Germain will lead the Blaze, and his favorite target has become a real Iron Man, a guy that likes to play on both sides of the ball. Absolutely. Ryan Denard is his name, number nine. Nine touchdowns receiving, got his first pick last week in the game against Kansas City. Actually had two. One was called back because of a penalty. Had two touchdowns in that game. First two games of the season was named the Arena Football League's Iron Man of the Week. He is a true Iron Man for the Utah Blaze. The Blaze among the best in offense in the AFL. Neither one of these teams have really flexed their muscles on defense, so this could be an explosive game tonight. High scoring for sure. All right, it's Blaze football. They're back home taking on the rampage of Grand Rapids. Blaze football coming up next. Okay. Okay. If, when the keys are done, if they haven't kicked, feel free to flash those coaches up there and get those out of the way. Because they're doing this little uh, pregame nonsense right now where somebody goes out and does a ceremonial something or other. The ceremonial coin flip. The ceremonial puck drop. Welcome back to the Energy Solutions Arena. Beautiful night to be inside for some football. And the Utah Blaze thrilled to be back. Of course, they opened the season in this building. As you look at the fire pit. Uh, with a victory against New Orleans. Went out and split two games on the road. And now they're ready to get back to winning. As we take a look at the keys of the game. 
And it's very, I don't want to oversimplify this, Alema, but these are the facts. You got to stop their quarterback, you got to take care of your own. Yeah, absolutely. Contain Michael Bishop. Bishop is that guy, he's got those Michael Vick, uh, Vick qualities to him. He can get out and run. Talk to Hunky Cooper, the defensive coordinator for the Blaze, and he said, We just got to keep him in the pocket. If we can do that, his arm not that dangerous. On the other side, the Blaze got to protect Joe Germain. I talked to him in, in game two and game three. He had a stretch where he completed 25 in a row. And I said, what was the key to you being able to make all those completions? He said, part of it was rhythm. The other part was just plain protection. I didn't have to worry about guys being in my face. If they protect Joe Germain, Ron James said this, if we protect number 10, we're in good shape. And as you said, don't let Bishop get away. He can be explosive. Keys to the game brought to you by the Ken Garf Automotive Group. The driving force behind the Utah Blaze. We expect another packed house. And as we take a quick look at the coaches, Sparky McEwen hasn't had great success in three years, Alema, with the Rampage. Only a record of 10 and 25. Yeah, a young coach in the league, only been in the league for three years, and hasn't been all that successful. It's, it's a wonder he's still, is still yeah, working for the example. Rampage. On the other side, talk about, you know, uh, an exact opposite. Danny White, Hall of Famer, already in the AFL, 150 wins already in his career. Won two arena bowls when he was with Arizona, trying to get the Utah Blaze to that pinnacle. And he is uh, in a series of Hall of Fames. Yes. And just just a long-time uh, expert when it comes to arena football. Tonight's kickoff, which will be executed by the Blaze, brought to you by The Truth. Make your life a little easier. Kick the tobacco habit. Steve Vitek from North Carolina State. Been in the league a long time. The old man of the Utah Blaze. You can usually last a little longer when you're a kicker. Double digits now in the Arena Football League. He's been struggling a little bit this year as far as his field goals are concerned. But on kickoffs, this guy is lethal. Known for hitting the iron. And 11, you got to watch out for number five of the Rampage. A dangerous, dangerous return man. And Marshall will take it in the back of the end zone. And Marshall has a hole, as I said, a dangerous return man, and he is gone. And Alema, just like that, he shows you how explosive he can be. Last season was a classic example, led the league in all-purpose yards. Tim Marshall last year, uh, 1,300 yards in returns. Takes it high, bounces off the back wall, gets one block, and then this is just speed. There's nobody even in the vicinity, and nobody's going to catch him. Marshall in for the touchdown. 58 yards on the return. Not the way you want to start things off, but you remember that opener against New Orleans. They returned a kickoff for a touchdown as well right after the Blaze had scored. So very early in the ball game, and the Blaze will simply try to counter as they get the ball back following the kickoff return and the point after from Brian Gowans, which is also good. And just like that, Grand Rapids on the scoreboard. Danny White and his offense will go to work. White incidentally told me he's still frustrated with the new rule of not being able to be out on the field, especially when the team is, you know, 50 yards down at the other end of the field. He said that there's times when he has to get hand signals from Joe Germain, let him know, well, what is the distance? What yard line are you on? And then he became so accustomed to, of course, being out there on the field because that was a big part of the Arena Football League. But the rules have changed this year, that being one of the major rule changes in the league for 2007. Well, Grand Rapids strikes in a hurry as you look at Angel Estrada. Any relation to Eric Estrada? In Number 17. Well. The former uh, California Highway Patrolman. <laughs> Chips, yes. Slash, is he on some reality is there, show is now? Is there any other Eric Estrada? <laughs> uh, the former Cal California Highway Patrolman turned actor. Uh, at any rate, now the Blaze take a shot of this. Clarence Lawson standing deep in his own end zone. He'll take this one off the net if they can get a hold of it. Burley's got it. Burley's got some room. Saya Burley to the right side. Burley up near midfield. He has blockers. And Saya Burley with a fine return all the way down to the 15-yard line, putting the Blaze in great shape. Last week, Kevin Moffitt ran one back for a touchdown for the Utah Blaze. It was the second in team history. He's the one who had the, the first one last year. Moffitt, however, got injured, so now they're using Clarence Lawson back there. Saya Burley has been used as a return man. He picked it up off the net and gets a nice return, and they'll start at the 15 of the rampage. How about 33 yards? And as you said, at the 15-yard line, and Joe Germain will bring them out. Justin Skaggs 
We did not see him in the first game. Alema, he is active in this game. That's Boone in motion. Burley on one side, and Skaggs has it on the left. And a five-yard pickup as we take a look at our starters. Starting lineups courtesy of the U.S. Army. Check us out at GoArmy.com. Joe Germain, the best uh, quarterback in the league right now. The only one over 1,000 yards. Kevin Clemens, the big fullback. Sia Burley, of course, uh, the main target for Joe Germain. Was lost for the second game. Came back last week and now is at full strength after having a bruised foot after the first game of the season. Second down, about six yards to go. Skaggs, the motion man. All three receivers there you see on the right side. Germain looking. There's the protection and just overthrows Burley. You mentioned he needs protection, and he got protection that time, but just couldn't put enough touch on the pass. And Isaiah Burley coming across the back of the uh, end zone and just couldn't uh, hang on to it. Defensively for the Rampage, not exactly a unit that has anyone that will really jump out at you, except that Angel Estrada has a cool name. <laughs> yeah, their defense uh, not doing very well this no. year. They've been giving up 63 points per game, and the Utah Jan or Utah Blaze, I should say, looking to put some points up right now. Big third down right now. Burley in motion on the right side. The Blaze need about six or 11 for a touchdown. Jermaine has his man Skaggs, and Skaggs knocked out of bounds at the two-yard line. Actually, they'll, they'll give him to the one. And the important thing is that is a first down and goal. This first down brought to you by Full Throttle. Another Full Throttle first down. Skaggs does a nice job hauling this one in. This is a big catch for Skaggs last week. He had one right off his fingertip that could have been a touchdown. So important for him to get his confidence right now. And 11, this is that jumbo lineup they like to bring in. They'll bring in uh, the big Frank Carter. Clemens, Kautai Olival, a couple of fullbacks, uh, extra fullbacks. Aaron Boone, the only receiver. They'll keep it on the ground. Touchdown! Blaze, Frank Carter. Third rushing touchdown of the season for the six foot, 258 pounder. All of his touchdowns coming out of that same formation. As you mentioned, they call it the jumbo. It's their goal line offense. And now that they have open substitution in the Arena Football League, they're able to bring in different guys just uh, you know, for these specific types of situations. And Carter has scored on that exact same play three times this yep. year. Green Bay Packers used to have a setup like that. They called the hippo. And the, the back, like Carter, would just take the ball and look for the first opening the hippo creates. And he would dive in. And it worked right there perfectly. Steve Vitek for the point after. And it is good. And just like that, the Blaze tie this game up after the Rampage open it with a kickoff return for a touchdown. We're all tied up. Well, we said this could be one of those games where a lot of points are scored because neither one of these teams prides themselves on defense. And just a couple of minutes into the game, we are tied up at seven apiece. Four plays, 15 yards, but really set up a lemma by the nice kickoff return. Absolutely. Uh, Saya Burley with a nice return out to the 15, and Frank Carter taking it in on the sweep for the touchdown to tie it up. 
Danny White actually uh, didn't have too much trouble calling the plays, even though they were on the opposite end of the field. I asked him if Joe Germain has ever had to call some plays on his own because he didn't get the, the, the signal or the radio. Mm -hmm. you know, he used the radio, and he says, no, he hasn't called any on but he's missed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'll call one thing, and he'll run something else because he can't hear me. Oh, boy. There's not a whole lot of uh, quarterbacks calling their own plays in professional football anymore. Peyton Manning did it for a few years with the Colts. They try a little onside kick, and it looks like, to me, a lemma. The Vitek kicked that just way too hard. I'm not. Maybe he was just trying to squib kick it through the the uh, rampage players, but it ended up right they've at about got, the 15-yard line. They had no chance of recovering that. No, they, they've got several different onside kicks. We were at practice yesterday, and they were rehearsing some yeah. of them, for lack of a better term. It wasn't a rehearsal, but they were practicing some of them. And one of them is to try to hit somebody on that front line. I think that's what he was trying to attempt there. But uh, Jerome Riley able to scoop it up. All right, so out come the Rampage, and keep an eye on Michael Bishop, number seven, newly acquired quarterback out of Kansas State. He was a Heisman runner-up. Quick pass outside to Marshall, and Marshall down to about the two-yard line. And Tim Marshall is a guy who will be very, very busy tonight, very active. We mentioned this before. He led the, uh, the AFL in all-purpose yards last year. So he'll be busy tonight. He was the first ever to have 1,300 yards receiving and 1,300 yards as a uh, kick returner. Uh, very dangerous. Last week, 124 yards in, in their in their game. Second down and goal. Chris Ryan, the back behind Bishop. Bishop looking, looking, nowhere to go. Goes left side, touchdown, but there's a flag down. Jerome Riley caught the pass on the right side. As the protection started to break down, we'll have to wait and see. And Bishop's indicating it's a touchdown. Illegal defense, number nine, out of the box. Ryan Bell Denard. Decline, score is good. There you go. It's that imaginary box that, uh, that that you've got your Mac linebacker, of course, and then your Jack. But and Jack can't leave. Jack can't leave that box, and, and, uh, and apparently he did. But well, it's all for naught. And that, that's what Michael Bishop does, too, is, is part of it is, is he he makes you impatient. And if you're the Jack linebacker, you want to leave and try to right. get around. Point after is good. So just like that, the offense flex their muscles again. Here's that touchdown, Al. You see right underneath, that's, uh, that's Marshall being locked up by Lawrence. Or Lawson, excuse me. And here's Bishop wanted to go to, to, to Marshall and then turn around on the other side, was able to find the receiver for the touchdown i didn't see denard too far out of like i said this imaginary box and he can uh, you can shadow the quarterback you can shadow him but you're not allowed to leave that box and like i mentioned guys get impatient when they're because bishop is such a great runner they're thinking he's going to break and run they're trying to anticipate and that's where they get in trouble well that was a toughie two plays eight yards but you know again both of these scoring drives have been set up by kickoffs. The Blaze, of course, have a nice 33-yard kickoff return to set up theirs, and then a failed attempt on uh, some sort of one of their many uh, onside kick styles. And there you go. So the Rampage back up top, and the Blaze will try again. Clarence Lawson back of the end zone. Saya Burley just in front of the end zone awaiting the kick of Brian Gowans. And this one's coming off the net. Lawson's got it. Five, ten. Lawson, decent yardage up to about the 15. And Clarence Lawson, who has been a, a bright spot on kickoff returns for the Blaze, has the offense set up at the 15-yard line, first and ten. Lawson, the former University of Utah standout, who played uh, quite a bit in Las Vegas, also in Arizona, which is why he's a familiar face for the coaching staff here at the Utah Blaze. Wall came over, for the most part, from the Arizona Rattlers. Joe Germain brings him out. Now Ryan Denard in at offense. Wide receiver to the left side. Saya Burley will go in motion. And Aaron Boone on the right side. Quick pass over the middle. Burley. Oh, and Burley, half a step from busting away. Might have scored had he gotten out of that tackle, but a pickup of about seven yards just past the 20-yard line. And here we see Ryan Bernard, who's a uh, Ironman two weeks in a row, getting some offense. 
Here's a look. Uh, you see Saya Burley. He comes out. He reads the defense quickly and knows where to sit down. Nice job by Joe Germain and Saya Burley. The communication, getting the ball out to him. Pick up about eight. Blaze have a lot of depth at wide receiver. Lem, if they can just keep everybody healthy, uh, you know, it's a nice problem to have. Jermaine back pass looking deep. He's looking deep. He's got Denard. Denard touchdown! His 11th touchdown of the season. That's why Denard is so dangerous. 6'3, 227 pounds. Another big target for Joe Jermaine. Got behind the defender on that one, Chuck Wesley, for some reason was trying to come up on the play. And that left Denard wide open in the end zone. And there's starting to be a good chemistry right now between Denard and Joe Germain. 22 touchdown passes now for Germain. There's going to be a little tug of war between the offense and the defense if Denard proves himself to be so valuable on both sides of the ball. We're tied up once again. We're all tied up here in the Energy Solutions Arena, the Utah Blaze, and the Grand Rapids Rampage. Joe Germain, 49 yards passing already, Alema, and Michael Bishop only eight, but, of course, they're aided by a kickoff return for a touchdown, and the one drive they had was, what, 10 yards? Absolutely. Joe Germain, there's a look at him. His numbers are the scoring drive, two plays, 35 yards. Uh, catches Denard on a 28-yard corner route for the touchdown. Jermaine, first quarterback so far this season to go over 1,000 yards, and we had talked about his ability, his potential, and he's starting to show it this season. Yeah, you've told me you think this young man will be a star in this league. Might be one of the only quarterbacks in the league that actually has a Super Bowl ring. True, with the St. Louis Rams. Yeah. Kickoff is underway. Here come the Rampage from inside his own end zone as usual it's marshall but how about that that is great coverage by a guy who can be very dangerous in a number of ways including kickoff returns garrett smith doing a nice job coming down and making the tackle the 6'2 289 pounder out of the university of utah well we saw michael bishop lead them on the short drive we'll see what we can do or what he can do when he's got to go near the length of the field. We do have a player down, though. That would be Greg Scott, defensive lineman. 6'4", 280 pounds out of Hampton. And he's holding on to that knee and that lower leg. Does not look great. Speaking of injuries, let's take a look at the injury report for the Blaze, courtesy of Comprehensive Orthopedics and Sports Medicine for orthopedic care. You're on the team. 
Saya Burley has been nursing a foot sprain. It was really a, a bruised foot is what he was dealing with. Aaron Boone had a high ankle sprain uh, after the first game, uh, sat out a couple of games. You know, the thing about Aaron Boone, you can go to his web website, airboone.com, and follow what's going on. Wow. I got more information nice. on what was happening with his injury from, from his website than from the Blaze you website. You know you've made it when you have your own website. <laughs> Tom Pace out for uh, this game with a, an ankle sprain. He was hobbling yesterday in practice, so he will sit out this game. Well, let's let uh, the Rampage take care of Big Greg Scott. 6'4", 280 pounder is hurting right now. We'll take a break and be back. We're tied up. The Energy Solutions Arena. Back here at the Energy Solutions Arena, you see Greg Scott. That does not look good being helped off the field. He's not putting any weight at all on that left leg. He, of course, starting offensive lineman. So the Rampage will move forward without him. You're looking at number seven, Michael Bishop, newly acquired from Kansas City, former Kansas State quarterback. First of ten from the five-yard line flags everywhere, and it looks like, just as a guess, that Steve Konopka might have jumped offside, but he's pointing the other way. Start. Uh -huh. I'm a 62 on the offense. There you go. Got the distance to the goal. The peak first down. So that will knock the rampage back to about the three. Take a look at the right-hand side. You get nope. movement right there. And then Kanapka comes up, and Kanapka's going to be celebrating right now because he jumped <laughs> a couple of times last year, one time in a critical play when Denard had his second interception of the game, and uh, they've been on him about making sure that he stays in the arena football league. you got to have your hand down on the ground as the defensive lineman. Marshall, the motion man, back to Bass Bishop. Got his man on the left side, Troy Edwards. 19 receptions on the year for that young man. As we take a look at the offensive starters, courtesy of the U.S. Army, check us out at GoArmy.com. Of course, Michael Bishop in for his second game with, uh, and his second goal around with the Rampage. Last week, he was 5 for 8, had a touchdown throwing the ball, has uh, a touchdown already in this game tonight. Tim Marshall is the star receiver, as we mentioned, 2,600 yards plus last year in total offense receiving and kick returns. Second down, seven to go for Bishop. Again, Marshall in motion. Bishop looking short. He's got Riley for about three yards. And Jerome Riley, another one. He'll use a lot of different targets. Defensively, this is what the Blaze throw at you. Terrence Joseph was less uh, listed earlier as uh, questionable. They're wondering if he could go. They're glad he's there because that allows them to play Ryan Denard at that Jack linebacker position. Also, Chris Janik has been giving the Utah Blaze some good pressure up the middle. Those are the men to watch on the defensive side of the ball. Third down and four for Michael Bishop and the Rampage. Marshall in motion. Bishop looking. Fires downfield. Has Marshall. Nice catch considering the pass was a little behind him. But the defense not able to hold and a big gainer for the Rampage. Clarence Lawson's got one-on-one -on -one right here with Marshall. So much cushion, hard for him to break it and uh, get to the ball. And that will be the matchup tonight. It will be Clarence Lawson, the best cover guy 
for the Utah Blaze against Tim Marshall, the best receiver for the Rampage. Talk to Hunky Cooper. He says he's going to try to go man-to-man -man as much as possible tonight. Three wide receivers on the uh, far right, as you can see there. One goes in motion. That's Riley Bishop back to throw. Bishop, quick pass to the outside. We've got a flag down in the backfield as Marshall makes it all the way down near the five-yard line. And so far, Bishop's favorite target. But it looks like this is coming back. I think we're going to have hold. Holding being called on uh, Kyle Rasmussen out of Michigan State, 6'4, 315 pounds. Rasmussen is the center for this team. And I'll tell you, coming up the middle, uh, it's it's easy for those centers to try to reach out and grab the Mac linebacker as he's coming through. Uh, the most pressure is coming right up the middle there. We probably ought to explain the Mac linebacker. The simplest explanation is the Mac linebacker is the guy that can blitz. The Jack linebacker is the guy that generally covers. Well done. Well done, Dave. Thank you. <laughs> I worked hard on that one. <laughs> Pass is complete, but it won't be good for much. It'll get him back to... Uh, about the line of scrimmage, you know the uh, I'll give you a little interesting history lesson here the The, the Jack linebacker yes in the early days of the AFL was actually called the Jill linebacker <laughs> So this is true Because it generally as we look at the replay Generally that was a position that you really didn't do a whole lot and they, they would protect like their wide receivers They were playing both sides. They'd have them play that Jill linebacker. Well, they decided, you know, let's call it the Jack linebacker. <laughs> True story or Schwante Bryant, nice hit on that play on Marshall. Uh, Bishop back to pass. Got his man, but well short of a first down. So the defense holding once again. That'll bring up a third and about 15 yards. And, uh, you know, it's 27 to 25. Every time you look down there, that, that seemed to be somewhere near the ball. Joseph and Lawson. Terrence Joseph is the, the guy that they, they really wanted to make sure that he was in there for this game. Bishop, we mentioned he's not a great passer, but so far tonight, 7-for-7, seven 7, 42 yards and a touchdown. Uh, trying to, I, I think that's perfect. That's 100%. That's, pretty good. Is that that's right? a good rating. Yes. But he needs 19, uh, well, we'll call it actually about 15 yards right here. And... Apparently, Bishop needs some time to think about this. He's taking a timeout. Keep in mind, he is he's, this is his second tour of duty, as you mentioned, but he's only been with his team for uh, one game, and prior to that game, he only had one short practice with him. And we haven't seen uh, Bishop break out of the pocket so far in this game and uh, try to bust a move and get down the field or get up the field. And th that's uh, a good job right now by the defense for the Utah Blaze. Their main concern is trying to keep contained, keep them in the pocket. And for the defensive backs, keep those receivers in front of you as much as you can. And I talked to, talked to Hunky Cooper about how, how to defend against Bishop. And he said, part of it is we just got to give that defensive line a fraction of a second more. There's a look at Hunky Cooper out there, the uh, Hall of Famer, great AFL player when he was with the Rattlers. And, you know, I, I was talking to Cooper about this. He is such a great player. Now being a coach, is it yeah. difficult for him to try to communicate the things that, that come naturally to him? And he said, yeah, I'll tell you what, I get frustrated sometimes. Yeah. I want to put the pads on and go out and show him this is how you do it. Future AFL Hall of Famer. You know, it's a, it's a little bit like uh, Jerry Sloan, the Utah Jazz, a guy who had a very specific way he liked to play and sometimes has trouble conveying that to his players. Third down, Bishop tries to get out. We talked about happy feet. And look who's there to bring him down, Ryan Bernard and a host of others. Janik involved, and they drop Bishop. Janik, no gain. Pressure up the middle. Watch, he, he just gets enough of Bishop to pull him down, and that's exactly what the Utah Blaze wanted to get done with Michael Bishop. Now they got to stop. I talked to Hunky Cooper, and he said, you know, uh, we've struggled. I said, we're going to get three or four stops in this game. That's how many wow. they have all season right now. He said, we're getting that many tonight. Well, there's one. Field goal attempt on the way from Gowans. No good. Lawson on the return. And Lawson out to the seven-yard line. Well, that is a 100% stop there. They didn't even get the field goal. So, obviously, the defensive coaching staff thrilled about that. Ron James also comes out, the line coach, to congratulate his guys. James and other guys have been a great addition to this coaching staff, head coach of Vegas for the last two years. 
and now coaching the lineman might have been instrumental in bringing a guy like Frank Carter to this team. Absolutely. Uh, Carter's relationship with uh, Ron James was one of the big reasons why he came over, and uh, uh, Carter has been a, a huge addition to this year's team. Taking a look at the guys in the fire pit. They're ready to go. Joe Germain, 49 yards passing already, and here he goes again. Germain, oh, right, you know what? Aaron Boone, well, there's a couple of refs look like they were reaching for their flag, but he got held up right around the 20-yard line. You saw it, right? I'm not seeing yeah, Absolutely. Things. We're going to take a look at the replay here. Aaron Boone is on the uh, right side of your screen. That's where Jermaine is looking. And right as he's throwing the ball right now, there is contact. Boone is able to break loose, but yeah. as soon as he turns to look for the ball, it is there, and he's unable to pull it in. Second down and 10. There's Boone. He's been out a couple of games, injured with that ankle injury that he suffered in the opener. Boone and Burley to the right. Skaggs in motion. Jermaine, quick pass on the right side to Burley. He's dangerous in the open field. And Sia Burley up past the 20-yard line near midfield. Burley with 20 receptions on the season coming into this game. Five touchdowns over 300 yards and picks up 14 right Great there. misdirection play here. Gets it out to Burley. He's got Hans Olsen clearing right in front of him. And Sia Burley to near midfield. Boy, and the, uh, that Rampage defense bit on that misdirection. Just beautiful. First and 10, Justin Skaggs in the lineup. The motion man. Boone on one side, Burley on the other. Jermaine back to throw. Jermaine looking deep again. He's got Skaggs a little underthrown, and they're not going to give him the reception. Skaggs not happy about it. And unfortunately, there's no instant replay in the AFL. I don't know, Dave. The angle that I had from our broadcast position up here, it looked like he was able to corral that in. Let's take a look and see if we got a good angle here. We see Skaggs go down. It, he, oh. it looks like he had oh, no, 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 maybe, no. Maybe maybe they're right. Maybe they're right. I didn't see that part. Let's see a look at the reverse angle here. And yeah, it's on the it right hit there. the ground. Nice job by Skaggs selling it, though. I'll yeah, tell you that. Excellent. <laughs> excellent job there. Skaggs and Boone on each side. That's Burley in motion. Jermaine flags down. He's got Burley. Boy, that open uh, in the middle has been open all night. And Burley down near uh, the three-yard line, but there's a flag way, way back in the backfield. So I don't mean to uh, uh, undersell that last play with a lack of excitement, but I don't think it's going to count. Wait and hear what well, the call now is. The players are moving. Offside. Offside. I stand corrected. How about that? So 23 yards, Saya Burley. Boy, he's dangerous when he gets that ball in the open field. Absolutely. It'll be a first to goal at the six. And you watch Justin Skaggs as well. You saw the jump on the offsides penalty. The pass to Saya Burley. Watch Justin Skaggs will come from the left side of your screen and uh, makes a nice block downfield that helped them get inside the 10. First and goal. Clemens in the backfield. And Clemens takes it right side. And to be perfectly honest, the Blaze haven't had a lot of success rushing the ball this year. Then again, they haven't had a lot of attempts either. Yeah, the Utah Blaze, not a, a, you know, they were a better rushing team last year. Kaltai Olebao was one of the uh, fullbacks that they used, and Clemens was the other one. They had quite a bit of success. And i got to tell you, as a, as a former running back, it's hard to take that quick toss and really do anything. I'd rather take a long handoff as opposed yeah. to that quick toss. Especially when you don't have as much room to move on each side of the football. That's the end of the first quarter, and we're deadlocked.
held up there. Check out this Justin Skaggs fan. He's got his number three jersey and uh, flaming hat. It's Ghost Rider. I gotta tell you, there, there are more jerseys at these games. I gotta, we gotta talk a little bit about that. All right, first and goal. Joe Germain with Sia Burley in motion. Skaggs and Boone to the left. Germain back to pass. Touchdown, Justin Skaggs. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was at the opposite end of the field, but nonetheless, Justin Skaggs picks up his uh, second touchdown of the season, and the Blazer back up top, and that stop that Hunky Cooper told you uh, he was going to have, what, three of? Said four? Three, three, three or four tonight. It's paid off. Point after, Steve Vitek is good. And the Blaze come up big after a defensive stand, and they lead it. There's Justin Skaggs just hauled in the touchdown reception from Joe Germain to put this team up 21 to 14 against the Grand Rapids Rampage. And a nice drive after they held defensively six plays, 43 yards, and Skaggs hauls in the reception. And Skaggs kind of bobbled that ball a little bit. He's been questioning in his hands uh, since uh, the last game when he was activated, and um, that was important for him to haul that one in for the touchdown. Kick is underway. And oh, ooh, takes a good bounce off the iron. That's dangerous. And how about that? Recovered at the two and a half. Oh, they're going to. Oh, they're walking up even further. They gave him to the four yard line. But boy, if you can hit the iron, the net's yep. one thing. If you can hit the iron, there's no telling where the ball's going to run. And uh, that's what Vinatech does so well in his 11 years. Uh, here you're going to see it goes off the bottom iron. It takes that crazy bounce. And so Steve Vinatech, even though he's just the kicker, he's uh, the Iron Man, a different kind that's of Iron right. Man. <laughs> uh, or Shante Bryant, one of the stalwarts on defense that you will also see offensively for the Blaze. And now they come out looking for yet another stop. Michael Bishop. 6'1", 215 pounder out of Kansas State. He was a Heisman runner-up back in 1998. Now leading the rampage. Bishop looking to the right, batted down. And you talk about telegraphing. He had his eyes in one direction on that one, and the defense was able to read it. Here's, here's your game summary so far, and uh, one thing not illustrated, of course, the big stop. Tim Marshall, of course, opened things up with that uh, return for a touchdown, 58 yards. Joe Germain uh, comes back, answers. He's got a couple of touchdowns in this game. And Bishop's number is pretty impressive uh, up to this point. Seven for eight, 42 yards, and a touchdown in this game. Game summary brought to you by Altia's Health Plans. People you like, health insurance you'll love. Looking deep and not caught by Marshall. Well, I thought he had that right in his gut. 
and let's credit the defense once again. And Clarence Lawson back there to break it up. Lawson has him one-on-one, -on -one, makes, uh, uh, makes sure he gets his head turned around in time to look up and break this play up. Ooh, he got his hands on it a couple of times. Uh, that's what knocked it out of the bread basket of Marshall. He probably could have held on to it. One more hand on the ball right there, and it's out. So the Rampage try to go deep on second down. It's third now. Bishop back to throw. He's looking at Marshall. Bishop drops the ball. Recovered by Denard. Denard recovers the ball. The pressure put on by Kanaka. And the other lineman and the Ironman comes up big. Ryan Denard, great job. And this is the thing about Ryan Denard. There are guys out there like an Eric Weather in the right place at the right time. They have a sixth sense for where the ball is. Denard is that guy. Ball comes loose, and, and all of a sudden, Denard just happens to be there. He's always around the ball. Big play. Another stop for the Utah Blaze. They got two now. They only need one more. We can go home. <laughs> <laughs> First and ten for the Blaze, and they get the ball at the three-yard line. Quick toss, Clemens tries the left side, touchdown, Blaze! <laughs> well, Kevin Clemens, I think, just uh, tripled his off his uh, rushing output for the year with a four-yard touchdown run, and now the Blaze go up, pending the point after. 28-14 if Steve Vitek can connect. Jason Gesser the hold. Oh, he missed. Oh, I should never have called that. My bad. Clemens oh, taking advantage of the few times he gets the ball. That's his first rushing touchdown of the season. All right, the Blaze lead at 27-14 after a big turnover is converted into a touchdown. Welcome back, Utah Lady 27-14 over at Grand Rapids. Dave Fox, Alema Harrington, and Alema, I got to tell you, one thing I notice about Blaze games, and we've got a, a, a good crowd here tonight, nearly a packed house, I've never seen so many fans show up in jerseys of their home team. You don't see that near as much at college football games. I don't see it this much at basketball games, jazz games. I mean, these you, fans. You almost get the fans lost behind they because behind they're all wearing them. jerseys, too. I've never seen anything like it. Well, part of that is uh, that they sponsored the youth conference this year, and so all the youth conference kids get jerseys as part of uh, their participation. Wow. Well, a lot of them must be here. How about that? How about that kickoff coverage? They will give them the one yard line, but Kautai Alaveo down there in a hurry felt like he had a safety. 
take a look at the ball coming once again. The bouncing strange off the iron and picked up. He's outside oh. the end zone, and he, that was very close. Yeah, but you know, line, yeah. you, you know, in those situations, they will give the offensive player yeah, the, the forward true. motion or, or where uh, the forward spot out there on the field. Kyle Laval, of course, the great University of Utah linebacker yep. who was a stud for the Utah Blaze last year, played uh, also in the National Indoor Football League. Great linebacker, doesn't have to play fullback this year. But uh, Oliva, one of the good ones for the Blaze and a local kid. Michael Bishop brings him out, throwing from his own end zone. Passes complete with the right side. Marshall again, he'll pick up a couple. And Alema Bishop was 7 for 7 in that first quarter. That last drive, 0 for 2 and a fumble. Not Utah good. Blaze look like they've rattled Bishop's cage just a little bit. Nice job on that last play by Terrence Joseph, who is trying to battle through. He's got a groin pull, which is very tough if you're playing on this surface number one than playing the position of defensive yeah. back. But so far, he's done a nice job. Jerome Riley in motion. Bishop looking right. He has oh, Riley threw it quite a bit behind him. And you mentioned the lemma that, you know, Bishop's... He's a great runner, and he's a good passer, but he has a tendency to occasionally be a little off target. And he gets happy feet when he's yeah. back there. And now that he's starting to feel some pressure, uh, he he's going to be less and less accurate because of that. Nice job as well by Clarence Lawson coming up and laying the hat. And as, as long as Utah is coming up and playing tough defense and hitting hard, then the guys are going to start hearing footsteps. So now Bishop's got a third... And about seven or eight, and we got a timeout. Another timeout taken by Bishop. And, and I don't know if this is twice now he's had to call a timeout. You know, it's interesting because the play right before that, you saw uh, Michael Bishop go to his uh, helmet, and it's, it looked to me like he was trying to hear. indicate that he's having a hard time with his headset inside. And again, when you're at the opposite end of the field from your bench, it can be rather difficult. The Blaze looking good so far. A couple of defensive stops, and that has helped them build up a 27-14 lead over the Rampage. Welcome back to the Energy Solutions Arena. Dave Fox along with Alema Harrington. Blaze football. Ten minutes to play here in the second quarter in a game that the Blaze have dominated. Actually, it's nice to see some domination on the defensive side because they, uh, well, I don't know how else to put it, but they were last <laughs> in the league. And, and, there's, there's no I, way to sugarcoat it, Dave. I can't, Dave. I can't put lipstick just on a pig. <laughs> just go ahead and say they it. Were, you know, and it's, it's changed. Uh, at any rate, third down, about seven to go. Michael Bishop, the quarterback for the Rampage, looking, looking deep in his end zone, under pressure. He's running dangerous when he runs. Has the first down and more. And this is where Bishop, you warned him this before the game, Alema, you got to contain Bishop out of his own end zone. But there is a flag down, and Terrence Joseph says it's going against the Rampage. This may be coming back. Could be an illegal block downfield or hold downfield. But that's, nonetheless, you see how explosive Bishop can be with his feet. Oh, number 16 on the offense. There you go. After this is going to fire the five. 
to be third down. All right, look good, but won't count. This is exactly what the uh, Rampage did not need is for Bishop to finally, you know, get out there and start to feel good about himself, and then he gets called back because of the penalty because number 16 downfield uh, holding on the play. That's Troy Edwards, one of the wide receivers. But that's the thing about Bishop. You can't give up on him. You, you might think that you have him, but you don't until he's on the ground. We mentioned in the pregame, he's the only player, this is unreal, in the history of the league to rush for 100 yards in a game. Bishop back to throw on third down. And passes incomplete. And that'll bring up fourth. And about four. And again, a nice job by the defense for the Utah Blaze because what they're doing, they're starting to rattle Bishop. Bishop was trying to find uh, a receiver that was open. He found his man, but as he was going, he saw somebody in his face, and he had to let the, uh, the ball go early, and it, it, it bounces off the turf. Well, big fourth down. They only need four. You think with a quarterback like Michael Bishop, the biggest fear is his running, and he could pick that up, but we will see. Bishop back to throw, looking deep. Lofts this one up. And there are flags all over, and we may have a lemma, a pass interference on Clarence Lawson. Lawson fell down at about the 25-yard line. Lawson had the man-on-man -man coverage in that one. There's a souvenir going yeah. out to one of the uh, fans in the stands. Yeah, it's an illegal contact, so that young man gets a football. And the Rampage get a first down. Here's a look at uh, Marshall, and then Lawson will make contact with him right here. Marshall goes uh, through him. Lawson stumbles <laughs> to the ground. And, and unfortunately for, for the Utah Blaze, I'm not sure if that ball was going to be on target anyway. There's a look at the penalties. Grand Rapids, three penalties, 20 yards. Uh, Utah just one for five. Which is good because the Blaze have uh, had trouble with penalties so far this year. Bishop, quick pass to the outside. It's complete. Oh, and incomplete. Wow. Troy Edwards, I mean, he had the ball in his hands, read the label, spun it around, and then dropped it. A couple of big mistakes for uh, Troy Edwards on this drive. He had the holding play, and then this one just goes oh. right through his hands. Had a couple of shots at it. But once again, I, I really think that guys like like Edwards and even Marshall, the receivers for the Rampage, are starting to hear the footsteps because guys like uh, Lawson, a, as well as uh, Joseph, they, they're bringing the hat. Yeah, they'll hit you. Second down, quick pass over the top. The big lineman! <laughs> that collision. I'll tell you, he's proud of himself right now. No question about it. Or Schwante Bryant collided. I mean, head on with Chris Ryan, who's 300 pounds, Olema. Wow. That's Terrell McGill. He's 6'4", 325 pounds. And he's not accustomed to catching the ball. No. And then now he's bobbling, and he's thinking, uh-oh, who's coming up? Oh, I see our swat. They Bryant, bang, <laughs> right in my face. Bryant, 191 pounds, colliding with the 300-pounder and knocking him silly. Bishop, by the way, in the second quarter, only one completion, one of seven. I haven't seen too many bulky linemen, by the way, that have soft hands anyway. <laughs> we saw Manai Smith catch well, a Manai touchdown Smith, for the right. in the first game. You're right, but I, I can tell you that Scott was not looking smooth when he runs. There goes another penalty. That's the fourth wow. uh, of the game that goes against the Rampage. Now, Bishop doesn't like this. This will knock him back and bring up a third at about 16 yards. I've mentioned in that first quarter, he was 7-of-7 seven seven as he gets the call there from Sparky McEwen trying to hear the play. Second quarter, only one completion. And now a third down, third and long. Opportunity for the Blaze to step up. Or Schwante Bryant in the backfield along with Lawson and Joseph. Bishop the throw. Looking deep. Bishop has his man. And well, the biggest problem there is Terrence Joseph didn't turn around and look for the ball. You're going to have a penalty. Joseph was man on man with Marshall on that play and tried to get cushion, breaks the cushion. Automatic first down. Well, the good news is in the AFL, it's not a uh, spot of the infraction like the NFL. So, but clearly, all you've got to do is, you know, you turn around, he might have an interception. That's the second time there's a pass interference call against the Utah Blaze where if. Uh, Hey, they, they just stayed off of the the 
receiver and it probably would have fallen incomplete or at the very least perhaps been inter uh, intercepted there's Bishop's numbers started off great but he's cooled off since first and ten Bishop little shuttle pass to the outside right side Edwards has it and nearly picks up a first down that was kind of like a shot put but it works for an eight-yard gain. Any way to get it done. Blaze have watched a ton of tape on the rampage. They scouted this one out well. You see the both defenders come up as soon as they see the ball go out there. They know what the play is just because of the formation. Nice job uh, coming out and uh, keeping that from being a big game for the rampage. Rampage cross midfield. Michael Bishop. Brings them out. Second down and a couple, but he's looking for more. Passes complete just beyond the 20-yard line to Riley. And Jerome Riley, who actually has three touchdown receptions on the year, falls in the first down. That'll be Riley's fifth catch on the night, or check that third catch on the night. He does have a touchdown already in this game. Good looking or Schwante Bryant there, one of the iron men for the Utah Blaze. Plays on both sides of the ball. Had a nice hit moments ago against uh, Terrell McGill. Oh, man. Just knocked him silly. Well, the Blaze have had a couple of opportunities to hold on this drive, and the Rampage keep taking advantage of Blaze mistakes. Bishop, another quick pass to the outside. Marshall, and Marshall, good yardage down inside the 10, and that'll bring up a first and goal. You know, he's getting rid of that ball in a hurry. Obviously, he's uh, getting a little tired of the pressure. Hey, why wait? Get your news an hour early. Watch KJAZ weekdays at 4 o'clock for two news on KJAZ. And every night, watch two news at 9 right here on KJAZ. Look at that crew. Who's that handsome guy big, on big the right? Big dude on the right. Yeah. It's a lot of... A big tight end. <laughs> big bulky guy. <laughs> He could play tackle in this league. Oh, yeah. Eligible tackle? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Burley would have knocked me 20 <laughs> yards back. Second down, two to go. And we're going to stop this play and, oh, delay of game. You know, they, they moved the uh, play clocks. Actually, this is the first game they moved them. <laughs> and they, they may actually be in a spot that in some respects might be more difficult for them. They're smaller kind of off to the right whereas before they were right off the uh, end zone in much bigger numbers Michael Bishop just went to the sideline to get the play you just heard the referee and his mic seems not to be working I wonder if there's something going on inside the, the arena yeah. right now Bishop back to throw second and seven going to the end zone and that should be defensive pass interference but what doesn't matter it's an interception Bryant's got it but if you were going to call anything, you could call Riley, but what the heck? The plays have held again at 11. That's three. Three stops. Great job, Morris. One thing, Bryant gets a step on the receiver on this one. Goes out, oh. brings it in, and that's that's the guy. He plays on both sides of the ball. He's a good receiver as well. Uh, got a reception that time from Michael Bishop. Another stop for the Utah Blaze. Second Enter. interception of the season yeah. for this defense. Yeah, Ryan Denard had the first, and... Uh, both by guys, of course, that spent a lot of time on both sides of the ball. So the Blaze have held. The defense now has held three times. Can the offense capitalize? Aaron Boone in motion on the right side. Burley and Skaggs to the left. Jermaine. Jermaine going deep. Flags down. And Boone hauls it in at the three-yard line. Let's wait and sort out the flag. It's a flag down all the way back at the two. I was going to say, as soon as they line up that formation, touchdown Boone. He's been chopping at the bit, anxious to get back and see what the penalty is. Ball start. It. It'll stand. Look at Boone. Does a great job with the concentration. Good coverage by Kevin Gaines. Got an arm on Boone's arm. Boone, a strong guy. Spends a lot of time in the weight room. It paid off on that play. 40 yards. Now, they call false start on the defense. That means that uh, the, the defensive lineman picked up his wow. hand. Because the defensive yeah, lineman have to keep that. their hands on the ground before the snap of the ball. Well, big play for the Blaze. Takes them all the way down first and goal at the five-yard line. First down brought to you by Full Throttle. Another Full Throttle first down. Burley in motion to the left side. Jermaine looking at him. Jermaine firing. Touchdown! Saya Burley! <laughs> Saya Burley! <laughs> 
Zaya Burley, the star for the Utah Blaze, the great receiver last year, so set all kinds of expansion franchise records. This time, just gets into the end zone, far enough to catch the ball and fall in the end zone for the TD. Zaya Burley, averaging 155 yards per game, gets the touchdown there. You talk about teamwork. The defense comes out, does its job, holds, and the offense takes full advantage. Extra point is up. This time it is good by Steve Vitek. And the offense has responded each time. This has been a complete game, but we got a lot of ball to go. But the play's up big. Well, the Blazer on fire to say the least up 34 to 14 and they have seen both sides of the ball really step up three times this defense has held and the offense has responded every time 136 yards passing already Elena from Joe Germain and three touchdowns Joe Germain averaging over 300 yards per game throwing the ball bit of tech ready to kick Rampage will try once again, and that's the souvenir. Fans, of course, in the end zone love that. At one end, you've got the fire pit that is just filled with just some, well, they're just nuts. <laughs> <laughs> but they love the game. Is that the euphemism? Is yeah. That, that's as good that's as an you, acronym. That's as good as you could do right there. Uh, yeah, they're crazy. They're crazy in the fire pit. <laughs> All right. Take a look at these possessions. The results are pretty good, Al. That's right. The Utah Blaze scoring on every position so far. No stops by the Rampage. And the Blaze putting uh, it in the end zone. A 15-yard touchdown uh, drive, 35-43. Then that quick one after the fumble recovery by Denard. And then the most recent touchdown. Clarence Lawson desperately trying to get a timeout for some reason. You know why? They didn't have enough players on the field. Justin Skaggs just kind of ambles out there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, they only had seven players on the field, and Clarence Lawson picked it up quickly. Hunky Cooper out there talking with him now. Yeah, they switched things up. Uh, Skaggs coming in at the Jack linebacker, which is normally where Ryan Denard plays, and uh, Denard coming in to take over for Terrence Joseph, who, as we mentioned, has been dealing with that groin injury, and maybe they're trying to get him a little rest and a little uh, uh, treatment over on the sideline. Hunky Cooper told me before the game that they really want to try to keep Denard at that jack position if they can. They're a much better defense when he is there. Now they'll put Skaggs in, who was a star for the Utah Blaze last year at that uh, wing jack, played the jack and uh, the wing receiver for the Blaze. He'll come in, he'll play the jack linebacker, and they'll move Denard to one of the secondary positions. And again, to to simplify things, the Jack linebacker, he's the guy that, generally speaking, will he's be... He's still the Jill linebacker. He's, he's still, still the Jill. He hangs out. He's got to stay but, home. Exactly. He's involved in coverage. And the Mac linebacker is the guy that's uh, that's going to be blitzing, Frank Carter. And, yeah, in the early days, he was the Jill linebacker. And they wisely changed that. All right, first and ten. Back to action now. Grand Rapids only one timeout left. Bishop back to pay. Hit right as he throws the ball. It is caught, but there's a flag thrown right into the mess that is the line of scrimmage, and we'll let them sort this out. Janik's looking for a flag. He thinks he got held on the play. We'll see what it is. Illegal defense, number three, linebacker out of the box. There you go. 
automatic first down. And, and, and that's Skaggs, who that just came Skaggs. in. You mentioned, uh, you know, maybe a little bit out of sorts. And it's it's kind of an imaginary box, but you've got to know where you're at. you got to stay within the, the boundaries of where the tackles are. So right. you can't be released from that box until the ball is thrown or it's handed off. So Skaggs, uh, he ventured a little bit out of that box and got called for the penalty. Well, it's a first of 10. End result, 10 yard. Then quick pass was a little bit too quick. And again, Bishop, he's got to get rid of the ball in a hurry because credit this Blaze defensive line and a little bit of Frank Carter for getting in there in a hurry. Taking down the two minutes left of the first half of this game. When we get to the one minute mark, it'll be the one minute warning. And uh, then the clock will stop right. uh, when the ball goes out of bounds. Incomplete pass. You'll notice the last minute will take uh, times almost as long as the rest of the quarter. <laughs> Maybe not quite that long. Second down, 10 yards. Bishop back to throw. Another quick pass, this time complete. Just past the 20-yard line as Troy Edwards found the soft spot just in front of Clarence Lawson. And probably the, uh, well, that is their most productive play since early in the first quarter. And they made our Schwante Bryant make a decision there. They had Marshall over there. Uh, and uh, or Schwante had to make a decision whether to go out to the sideline or cover the, the middle of the field. First and ten, Bishop. Wide open, Marshall right side. Denard can't get there. Will they give him the touchdown? Yes. Touchdown, Rampage. And without question, Tim Marshall definitely found the soft spot in that defense. Marshall looking for some fans wow. there in the uh, blaze end zone over there in the fire pit. Not oh, finding no, any. Yeah. That wasn't pretty. Take a look at Marshall. He's coming off the uh, left side and he'll go all the way across the field. Denier trying to play catch up there and they'll say that Marshall crossed the plane before he went into the wall or crossed the plane at the same time maybe he went into the wall. They'll credit him for the touchdown. Rampage within 14 points now. Brian Gowans can make it 13 with the extra point. And that is good. So since early going in the first quarter, the Rampage put together their best drive with one minute to go when we come back the blaze will try to respond Back here in the Energy Solutions Arena, great crowd on hand, and the Blaze have not disappointed. 34-21 the score. We talked at the outset of this game that these are two teams that have been generous with their defenses, but the Blaze have really buckled it up in this game, and that has led to that 13-point lead. Blaze with their hands team out there anticipating the onside kick. It'll go deep. Zaya Burley will let this one go, and that, that does not, that's... If it goes behind that bar, it's, if it's interfered by uh, the fire pit. Yeah. And they get the ball. They got the ball. Did you see that bizarre mule kick? Yes. Onside kick that Tennessee tried? Yeah, yes. 
Yes. That's a str or was it was it Kansas? Yeah, the Cats, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, you're Tennessee against the Blaze. Uh, weirdest thing. They I, I haven't seen I mean they Danny actually, they ran that they, they ran that last year and uh, Hunky Cooper and Ron James were both telling me they had seen it before. They were yelling at the guys to be ready for it and as the, the players were talking to each other that the mule kick right. came. And then the, the kicker kicks it before he even really has is yeah, done setting kick. it up. Kicks it backwards. <laughs> Strangest thing. All right, here come the Blaze already leading. 34-21. Jermaine quick pass outside to Justin Skaggs, who just did a tour on defense. And now comes back in on the offensive side of the ball. Actually, they've stayed with Burley, Boone, and Skaggs uh, through most of this game. And we saw what Boone could do in the early going of the opener against New Orleans. But then, remember, he got hurt. And didn't see much of him after that. There's Jermaine's numbers. Look Very effective. Out. 10 for 13, 142 yards. He's got three touchdowns in this game. He had a 10 touchdown game on the road. Wow. Like, the guy is phenomenal. Well, you told me you think he could be one of the bright stars of this league as he hits Burley over the middle for another nice pickup. Burley is on a, that's, I believe, his third reception tonight where he's just found the middle of that, the soft spot of that zone. And that's the great thing about Burley is he can recognize defenses right away. He and Joe Germain on the same page, and he can turn around. The ball is in the air, already on its way, and they'll haul it in for a nice game. Five receptions now, 60 yards, and a touchdown. For Saya Burley, another first down for the Blaze. Skaggs in motion. Jermaine looking around, surveying, goes to Skaggs and broken up. And I'll, I'll tell you what, you got to give uh, Reggie Doster credit. He closed in a hurry. And Doster, number 31, by the way, from the same university, Central Florida, that Saya Burley played in college. Saya Burley uh, also played with uh, Dante Culpepper. He wasn't bad. That was a pretty good player. He's all right. Big kid. Be nice if we get healthy for you Dolphin fans. Second down and ten. Burley will be the motion man on the left side. Boone and Skaggs the receivers. Joe Germain back to pass. Pump fakes. Oh, he's got Boone. He's got Boone. Touchdown, Blaze. There is a flag down, but I can just about guarantee it's going to go against the rampage. We're actually holding Boone. And he still got away and scored. There you go. Nice job by Boone. Boone runs a, 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 a route where it's a pump fake. And that's why the backer went out of the box. But Boone gets some separation. He's wide open. And Boone is into the end zone. How about that? Well, they, uh, they off they the coping, even, that's like that's like a skateboarding move right there. They didn't even call uh, my Angel Estrada pass interference. I saw that, but either way, it works. Point after is good by Steve Vitek, and the Blazers are not wasting any time. Let's take another look as they go up by 20. Aaron Boone, here you look. Uh, Jermaine's eyeing him up. Pump fake. And then lofts it in the air. He knows that Boone can get under it. Oh, wow. And watch this move right here. Nice. Woo. Nice. I haven't seen that one yet. I like it. I'll bet you'll see that on his website. <laughs> AaronBoone.com, you were telling That's me? That's right. AaronBoone.com. AirBoone. It's AirBoone.com. Played at Kentucky. His second touchdown reception on the year. And again, just a little glimpse of just how explosive that young man could be had he not been injured the last couple of weeks. Who knows? Yeah, uh, Boone had a nice first game for the Utah Blaze. Got plenty of family always in the stands who come up from Millard to watch him play. He played at Snow College, then on to Kentucky. Uh, uh, tour of duty in the uh, NFL Europe. Check this out, Alema. Six touchdowns, six different players. See, that, that, that's a little unique. You, wow. You would expect some distribution from Joe Germain with his receiving core, but six touchdowns from six different that's guys. Uh, that's a nice job. Clemens and Carter on the ground. Burley, Skaggs, Boone, and Denard through the air. And right now, the Blaze have got it going their way. 14 seconds to play here in the first half. It's like a basketball game. Everybody scores. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Spread the wealth. Kick is away. And the dangerous kick man, Tim Marshall, will not get a chance at this one. Fans couldn't even hang on to it. I wonder if the, uh, the ref will be a nice guy and give it back. No. No, it's not going to happen. Come on. 
You know, when you're in the fire pit and you're in the end zone and the ball comes in there, do not let it go. Hey, you got you to you show that you got some game when you sit up, back up. there. 14.7 seconds to go for Michael Bishop, who had a terrific first quarter but has struggled somewhat since then. And 14.7, not much time. But then again, in arena football, it can be an eternity. Bishop 6 for 14 since he was perfect 7 for 7 in that first quarter. First and 10. They're back at the five-yard line. Bishop sends Riley in motion. Back pass in his own end zone. Bishop being harassed. Throws deep downfield for Riley, but it's way off target. No one will get to that one. There's a flag down in an area that could indicate perhaps a late hit. And Chris Janik is pleading his case. Personal foul. Yep. Roughing the pass of number nine on the defense. It's a ten-yard penalty. Automatic first down. We might actually be able to hear this. We oh. <laughs> right, right into our right in parabolic our mic there. holder. Uh, who is that? Uh, is he all right? That was. That was a hit. You know, it's just in this game, especially with the, uh, you know, the, the proximity of the boards and that, that it's, it's almost impossible to stop yourself when you're that close. <laughs> Ron James put it best. He said the, the, the dasher boards are undefeated in this game. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Bishop, quick pass. No one is covering Troy Edwards. And Edwards hands the ball to a fan at the 17-yard line to stop the clock. The fan says, thank you. And it stops the clock with 2.4 seconds. Actually, very smart play on his part because there was no chance they were going to score. They, watch the end of this play. I, I really don't think he was he was trying to hand. He was just trying to stop the clock. But the fan alertly said, oh, that's a souvenir. I'm taking that home. So it there. goes out there, there and all go. of a sudden, the fan, ah, it's fine. <laughs> that's great. Should be the last play with this field goal. And no good. Can Still alive. Now. Flag is down, and Lawson has nowhere to go, so that does end the half pending this penalty. Let's hold on. But the Blaze defense holds on the field goal attempt. That's tough. I'll tell you what. You and I both know I haven't experienced this trying to catch uh, footballs coming off this net. It hits the top iron. Almost impossible to try to field that. Well, the Blaze offense is coming kick out on the field. The Number 97 of the kicker team. Oh, okay. One on time down. So they get First a play. Down the 10 -yard line. You there cannot you go. That was make not contact with, yeah. uh, with the receiver while the ball is still in the air. So as the ball was still coming down, somebody made contact with Lawson or one of the other players that was one of the receivers back there, and that will allow the Utah Blaze to get one more shot, shot at it from their own 10. With, with no time on the clock, an untimed down, and a lemma we would assume that they'll send Skaggs and Boone, Boone and Burley into the end zone. Boone and Skaggs, the taller of the uh, receivers on the field right now. The AFL version of the Hail Mary coming at you. Jermaine. The play off the net. Oh, he's going to go short to, to Boone and hope for something, but underthrows it. And that's all right. They'll go to the half with a rather comfortable lead, although anything can happen in arena football. But nonetheless, the blaze up 41-21. And I would have to say, Alema, the offense has done what we would normally expect, but the bright spot without question so far has been the defensive side of the ball. We're going to talk with head coach Danny White about that in just a second. Joe Germain, very effective. 12 of 17, 181 yards, four touchdowns. The Blaze got a couple of rushing touchdowns. Frank Carter and uh, Kevin Clemens getting into the end zone, uh, rushing the ball in this game so far tonight. Well, the Blaze up by 20, and Danny White just getting the headset put on right now. And, uh, Coach, if you're with us, let me ask you, first of all, we expect your offense to deliver like this, but you've got to be absolutely ecstatic with the three stops and the only 21 points your defense has given us. Well, I, I am. I am. I'm thrilled with the way our defense is playing. Um, you know, with, with four days rest, uh, they've come out and played pretty hard. Now, you know, the toughest thing in sports is to play hard when you got a big lead. We'll find out what we're made of in the second half, but I'm, I'm thrilled with it so far. 
coach Joe Germain's numbers. Uh, he's on target once again to get 300 plus yards, distributing the ball well. Four different guys with touchdowns. What has it been in the first half that has allowed him to be so effective? Well, I, you know, I, he just executes the offense well. First half, second half, third half. I mean, you know, it it doesn't matter with Joe. He's he's uh, very very efficient at running our offense. He knows what we're trying to do. He understands the down and situation, down distance and the situation we're in. And he, he just does a great job managing the game. All right, Coach, thank you much. Okay. We'll let you get to your team. Six different players have scored touchdowns for the Blaze. Way to go, Coach Danny White. And the Blaze lead at 41 to 21 at the half. Everything coming up, Blaze. They are on fire. The fire pit is loving it. And we'll be back.
yard. Sia Burley, a five-yard touchdown reception. And then Aaron Boone finished up the scoring in the first half, a 28-yard okay. touchdown reception. Six players for the Blaze got into the end zone. Okay, so I'm going to read this card right as the highlights start, and okay. then you jump in. And then when you flash out the stats, I'll read the second one. And then what are we doing after stats? Okay, and then we're, are we coming back with anything else? Okay. Well, there's still seven minutes. Well. Oh, oh, I, I'm sorry. I thought, I thought you said we were out in two minutes. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, two segment. Oh, when you said two, I thought you meant two minutes. Okay, gotcha. UNLV hanging tough with Oregon, 31-30. Wow. Yeah. You need to be out with about two minutes on the clock. The game clock. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Hey, what do we decide we're going to try to do after the game? Are we going to try to run a lemma down to the field or? Okay. Uh, that, I'll tell you, that Danny White thing was awesome. It was very cool. Yeah, hopefully he didn't notice. Yeah, I heard you. I'm really not happy that your seats are better than mine. Much better. Where, where are your seats? Right, right here, right on this, right on this row, over there. Yeah, yeah, but your your paycheck is better than mine. I mean, then my seats will be equivalent of where like that redhead is. All right, that's and, not and bad. Should flex your knees a little bit on this. There you go. There. I'll just slouch. There's our cameras right over there. Welcome back to the Energy Solutions Arena. A great night and a great night for football, especially if you are a Blaze fan. So far, everything has gone right offensively and defensively for the Blaze Day Fox, along with Alema Harrington. And we got a lot of highlights to show you on both sides of the ball because this has been a very balanced game, to say the very least. Let's take a look at some of the highlights brought to you by Sports Medicine of Utah, located at Salt Lake Community Medical Center. Any athlete, anytime. Tim Marshall starts things off a 58-yard touchdown on the kickoff return. Takes it into the end zone. They had 1,300 yards uh, returning balls last year. And then the interception by Orswante Bryant. The second quarter was all Utah Blaze. That set up a touchdown as well for the Utah Blaze. Saya Burley getting into the end zone. And Aaron Boone, the kid out of Millard High School, into the end zone for the touchdown. 
Puts the lays up by 20 going into the break. Highlights brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union. The stats brought to you by Sports Medicine of Utah, located at Salt Lake Community Medical Center. And any athlete, any time. And I guess one that's got to jump out at you there, Alema, is the turnovers. Now, the turnovers, no question, because the Utah Blaze, going into this game, only had one interception. They get, uh, you know, a couple of interceptions. They get a fumble recovery. Uh, they get the three stops that Hunky Cooper was saying that he wanted to get out of this uh, this game. His defense has stepped it up. He was telling me that he was a little bit fed up. He was... Uh, Getting ready to, to make some moves. I don't think he'll have to make, make it. an example of someone. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> His defense playing very well so far uh, in this first half. All right. Well, six different players have scored touchdowns. We'll see what they can come up with in the second half. The plays lead the rampage by 20. Second half coming your way next. All right, another 30 minutes of football action coming your way. The Blaze enjoying uh, Alema. What we understand is their biggest halftime lead in their young history. In my second year covering the Utah Blaze, uh, covered them their inaugural season. I've never seen them dominate a game like they are dominating this one right now, both offensively and defensively. Tonight's kickoff brought to you by The Truth. Make your life a little bit easier. Kick the tobacco habits. Blaze looked like they were set up for an onside kick, but this one is away. Burley takes it off the net. And Burley, room to his left side. Sia Burley up near midfield. Burley cuts back. And a great return by Sia Burley all the way to the 15-yard line. And you mentioned you've never seen him dominate in, in every aspect of the game. Offense, defense, special teams. Burley had a 33-yard uh, return in the first half that set up a touchdown. Now has another big return to start off play in the second half for the Utah Blaze. Here comes Joe Germain as the Blaze will be moving towards their dugout, if you will. That's kind of what you would have to call it in yeah, this sort of what it is. Yeah. Most arenas have what we refer to as a hockey uh, formation or the way that they set up their field and the, the players are kind of on the sideline. This one, they're, they're in the field. corners. Yeah. Justin Skaggs goes in motion. All three receivers on the right side. Germain back to pass. Germain, Skaggs, touchdown, Blaze! Skaggs with a nice route, the post corner for a touchdown. Maniah Smith is out in the middle of the field right now. Uh, has, could have a problem. Take a look at Joe Germain. Skaggs makes his move inside, breaks outside, and then right, as you mentioned, into the dugout for the Utah Blaze. Touchdown for Utah to start up the second half right after that long 
Return by Sia Burley, setting up a TD for Skaggs. And, you know, you mentioned that he is really cautiously. He's catching that ball with caution. Let it's working. About that, but it working. is working. Huge lead for the Blaze. We'll be back. Well, the Blaze score another touchdown to go up 47-21. The downside is Maniah Smith is on the field, and he has been there for a couple of minutes. They're trying to help him up now. And oh, boy, he, just, he looked like he was in tremendous pain holding his left knee. And but Smith, now he's what? Maybe it was like a cramp or something. Well, like it, it, well the way he was indicating, it looked like he was pointing to the top of his knee. And there's a good chance this is a surface that is a little bit hard. It's got a sponge on top of it and then the turf. Uh, there's a chance that he came down hard right on the kneecap. And you can bruise the patella doing that. And possibly, you know, it's one of those things he, he can walk it off. But that, that does, it, it hurts a lot. It smarts quite a bit for you know, a period of time. And then you can walk it off. Hopefully, Manaya Smith will be back. We'll try to get an injury report on him. Well, and it smarts on your offensive line as well. Uh, because he has been such a key in protecting Joe Germain. Nice scoring drive, huh? One play, 17 yards. Similar to the last time that uh, Syed Burley had a nice kickoff return. Very efficient, and it is capped by Steve Vitatek's point after 48 to 21 in a game in which the Blaze have come out and completely dominated. Let's go back to the keys of the game because there were two very basic elements. I mean, there are things that we could have talked about, but you pointed out there were two very basic elements to this game, and so far. The Blaze have done both of these. They've contained Bishop, no question about that. Uh, passing yards, 124 yards passing, but two inter uh, two touchdowns, one interception, plus uh, they caused him to fumble a ball right there near his own end zone. The Blaze turned that into points. And then protecting Joe Germain, they've been able to accomplish that. He has not been under pressure so far in this game. 198 yards and passed five touchdowns so far in this game. Keys to the game brought to you by the Ken Garf Automotive Group, the driving force behind the Utah Blaze. There's Joe Germain. We mentioned uh, in the first half, interesting that that young man has a Super Bowl ring. He does. He didn't actually play in the Super Bowl, but he was a member of the St. Louis Rams in 99 when another former Arena League star, Kurt Warner, led them to the Super Bowl. He's got a uh, Super Bowl ring, a Rose Bowl ring. Yeah, how about that? He's got, he's got some nice hardware. He'd like to, uh, at some point, uh, add to that collection with the uh, Arena Bowl ring. I can almost guarantee you there's nobody else in arena football that has a Super Bowl ring and a Rose Bowl ring. Possibility is possible. All right, kick is fielded off the net by Marshall, and he's gone again. Marshall, he did this to open the game, and now he does it to open... The offense for Grand Rapids in the second half. And Alema, how do you give this up twice? That'll put him wow. over 100 yards on returns for the game. First one was 58 yards for a touchdown. 55. This one, 55 wow. yards, takes it off the net, and he didn't even have to make a move. He found a seam, and he just used his speed to get to the end zone. The foot race, and nobody was going to catch him. 
Point after high snap. Well, that won't work. Oh, what's he going to do? Gary Yopremian now <laughs> trying to throw. Uh, Actually, he threw a nice pass. They got, they got it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm telling you right now that Brian Gowans is running around back there going, what am I going to do? Hey, here's a big fat lineman. I'll throw it at him. <laughs> Gets it to Chris Ryan, the Are fullback. Are you kidding me? High snap. And Michael yeah. Michael Bishop had a chance, and then the kicker says, "I got it," and then sends it over to Chris Ryan, and Ryan uh -oh. can't be stopped. He's wow. got forward momentum driving him past the goal line. He gets oh, in for boy. the two-point conversion. Well, let's hope that's not one of those things that comes back to haunt you. The blade's still up, 48-29. But getting back to Marshall, I mean, he leads the league in kickoff returns. It's you know, in the in the outdoor game, you may try to kick away. It's hard to do that unless I guess you squig kick. Or but if you hit the if you hit the dasher board, which is out of bounds on the kick, then the the, the ball is dead, and that's a it's a penalty. So yeah, and now you if you do. kick it over the uh, the uprights here, the standards, uh, the iron. If you kick it into the stands over, that's also a penalty. So kickers have. Uh, it's, now yeah, it's, it's enforced to, to kick the ball so that the, it yeah. can be returned, and which is good news for the Rampage and Tim Marshall right now. Yeah, two of their touchdowns on kickoff returns. How about that? And one of the funniest sitcoms on TV is now on KJS. Catch back-to-back -back episodes of Scrubs Monday through Friday, 10.05 and 10.35 p.m. KJS, it's your TV or Scrubs. Well, since 10-14 of the first quarter, the Blaze had been on a 41-7 tear before that disastrous kickoff return. And Saya Burley wrapped up at the 12-yard line. And I am just so impressed with Marshall as a kickoff returner. Last year, he led the league in all-purpose yards. And there's no question. I mean, I would just run all eight guys right at him and forget about everybody else. <laughs> Report on Manaya oh. Smith is that he's got a sprained knee. His return to the game is probable. He'll be replaced right now by Tyshawn Whitson, who they just brought in, a guy that played for Ron James in Las Vegas and uh, a very effective uh, offensive and defensive lineman. Another big kid, six foot six, 315 pounds out of Baylor, uh, three seasons in the Arena Football League. Well, and we'll see how this affects the protection, which has been great for Jermaine so far. Jermaine, quick pass outside, a little high and a little hot for Justin Skaggs, and that ends up as a souvenir. Somebody over there looks like they got hit pretty hard. Uh, by the way, get one more thought on Marshall. Three kickoff returns, Alema. 125 yards, two for touchdowns. The AFL record, by the way, is four touchdowns returned in a game. No, no, no I'm, I'm curious. Does Cooper have that record? Cooper, uh, Hunky Cooper, aside from everything that he has done uh, in this business, uh, also a great kick returner. Actually belongs to Anthony Derricks, New England, back in the year 2000. One game. But I'll let Hunky know you gave him some love. <laughs> some, some hunky, hunky love. <laughs> All right, Burley comes up with a reception, but they're going to be about a yard shy of the first down. Do you go to Clemens? Very rarely do you see this team put the ball on the ground. But it's a third and one. Aaron Boone on the far right side in motion. Skaggs and Burley, the other receivers. Quick pass outside to Boone. Good enough for the first down. Cross midfield and inside the 20-yard line. Blazer moving. Aaron Boone for the reception. And this first down brought to you by Full Throttle. Another Full Throttle first down. Aaron Boone coming back off that high ankle sprain looking good. That was nothing but a timing pass out there. Joe Germain had the ball in the air before Boone made his cut. Boone doing a nice job getting the head wrapped around and uh, hauling the ball in. Gets the first down for the Utah Blades. Well, I think this team is just so much more efficient when you can keep him on the field. You don't have to uh, have players like Denard playing both sides of the ball, wearing him out. There's no question about it. Jermaine back throw. Looking into the end zone for Boone. And he just overthrows him into uh, the little party section back there, the corner of the Energy Solutions field here, the Delta field. What do they call those high tops over there? Or those, I, I don't uh, know, those but tables? we were talking before the game, that might not be a bad place for us to broadcast from. <laughs> Endless supply of food. Here's a look, and uh, Boone doesn't know that the dashboard's coming up on him. This is always dangerous when guys get the legs kind of caught up the lower part of the dashboard, then the upper body momentum taking them over the top. Uh, you see ankle sprains, knee sprains going into there. Uh, fortunate he didn't get injured on that play. But how about the view the fans get right there? 
proximity in this game is just fantastic. Quick dump off inside to Clements, and that'll go for about five, six yards. Haven't seen that much. Uh, uh, Jermaine rarely dumps off to his back. I think that's the first time we've seen it all year. Last year they did it occasionally. They would throw it to Clemens or to Kautai Olivao. Uh, they were semi-effective with it. This year, um, Nia Smith, who we talked about, left the game so, uh, earlier with an injury, caught a touchdown, so they have done linemen eligible. Uh, and in a practice game earlier this year, Hans Olsen also caught a touchdown. Yeah. Oh, boy, if he catches one, watch out. <laughs> Sia Burley going in motion. It's third down. Blaze need about six for the first. Jermaine looking at Burley. He's got him. And Burley did a nice job of holding on to that ball because he heard the footsteps and got hit immediately. And he got a friendly spot from the official on this side of the field, the near side of the field, because the official on the other side was about a yard shy. Of first. Nice job by Burley because, uh, yeah, he knows where the first down marker is. He knows where he's got to get to. Got to that spot, made the reception, and uh, maybe he got the uh, half a yard bonus on the yeah, spot. He got a little help. There's a look what at Joe Jermaine's okay. numbers. 17 of 24, 228 yards, five touchdowns. First and goal, Jermaine looking into the end zone. Burley's there. Touchdown, Zaya Burley. His second of the game. Zaya Burley doing a nice job. He's got one-on-one -on -one man coverage, working the back of the end zone. Nice job by Joe Germain, and then you see Sia Burley, a little party. He goes into the party second. He spent a little time over there. That's all right. <laughs> good thing it wasn't at the other end. <laughs> There's a good look at Hunky Cooper, whose defense has played well tonight, giving the offense some props. 54 to 29, pending the point after, which is good. 55 to 29, and complete domination. And that young man. Is having himself a terrific game. Eight receptions, 85 yards, a couple of touchdowns, and the Blaze lead it big. Plays up big, 55-29. The Rampage just those 29 points, but the, the, their biggest asset has been number five, Tim Marshall, returning kickoffs. You take those away, and it's a horribly embarrassing route for Grand Rapids. And here he gets another shot at it. Or will he? No. And that's what you want to do, make it a souvenir. Yeah, Benetech would rather, I think, put it off the iron, but this time he puts it uh, into the into the back of the end zone for the touchback. You know, Grand Marshall, Grand Marshall, Grand Rapids has got to be wondering what happened last year. You remember Joe Germain yes. was injured. He couldn't play 
and Gesser really struggled. Alema threw five interceptions, and Grand Rapids won the game. Yep, uh, Grand Rapids won that game uh, in part because of the five interceptions that were thrown by Jason Gesser. Gesser learned a lot from that game. He's a much better quarterback. They kept him on the roster this year. In fact, signed him to an extension, and they'll keep him around. I think Gesser's got a chance, uh, a, another uh, Big Ten or Pac-10 quarterback, excuse me, uh, that has a chance to be a good player in this league. And this year, a completely different game, 55-29 right now, as the Blazers just dominated Bishop. Passes batted down. Garrett Smith got the big paw up there and knocked it down. There's a look Jason at Jason Gesser. Gesser. Gesser out of St. Louis High School in Honolulu, Hawaii. And Boy. then uh, made his way to Washington State. Where'd you go to high school? I went to uh, Punahou, which is one of the rivals of St. Louis ah, High School. Who's got a better sports program? Oh, St. Louis was dominant. They had a number of quarterbacks. Timmy Chang came out of St. Louis sure. High School who broke Ty Detmer's uh, all-time record in the NCAA. Jason Gesser was a good one. Also, Darnell Arsenault, who played in the AF2, uh, also up at the University right. of Utah. Those are just some of the great quarterbacks that have come out of that high, that small high school in Hawaii. Well, St. Louis actually came to Utah and played uh, Skyline yes, several did. years ago. On a very windy and cold night. I'll never forget that. Well, the Rampage are down by a bunch. It's 55-29, and the Blaze have dominated them in every aspect of the game. But they're trying once again. And Bishop back to throw. Bishop looking deep. And you know what? I'll tell you what. Chris Janik was right in his gut, and he had no chance to get that ball downfield. <laughs> Take a look at this, though. We showed you the possessions for the Blaze, and it was just touchdown, 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 touchdown. Completely different story. The Blaze yeah, defense has stepped They up. start off nice, and then they miss a field goal. That uh, counts as a stop, and then they get a fumble. Uh, that uh, Utah recovered an interception and then they finally get back on the board and then miss another field goal They, they have struggled mightily Well, here's an interesting note though their total offense is 130 yards kickoff returns is 132 yards <laughs> Quick kicking off uh, Broken up play there as Bishop throws deep but Troy Edwards stopped his route at midfield and the ball went to about the 10. Miscommunication yeah. between Bishop and his receiver there. He thought his guy was going to be uh, that much further beyond uh, Lawson. But Lawson has done a fantastic job defensively. The defensive backfield for the Utah Blaze doing a nice job tonight. And Janik doing a, a great job with pressure on uh, Bishop in this game. You know, I, I talked to Hans Olsen who last year played both sides of the ball. And he was the nose guard last night. Our last year, I asked him, do you miss playing defense? And uh, it just so happened Ron James was walking by. He said, yeah, and he's still trying to get time. And James told him, you're not good enough. <laughs> oh, nice. Pass is complete over the middle to very dangerous Marshall. You're not good enough. You know, I wonder, too, if, um, as we pick up a chin strap that broke on midfield there, B Bishop is still working his way back into you know this team he was just reacquired only played what one series last week he was five of eight on that series led him to a touchdown but you know there's even though he's played with this team before there's got to be some you know period of time where it's a little bit difficult to get reacclimated with this yeah. group. no i think that there is a no question a disconnect going on right now and you l look at michael bishop out there on the field and you got guys coming in and out trying to bring in plays because bishop is having a hard time with his headset there's nothing that can be done about that you have to you know roll with the punches or adjust on the fly and he has not been able to do that tonight now tim marshall goes to the sideline with a uh, uh, equipment problem and, and that 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 puts you that behind as well yeah. Jerome Riley, the motion man on the left side. Bishop back throw, looking right at him the whole way. And Riley's got it at the 15, trying to get wrapped up by Clarence Lawson before the posse finally arrives. But good yardage is first down inside the 15-yard line for the rampage. Lawson had one-on-one -on -one coverage that time on Jerome Riley. And it was uh, Ryan Denard coming over, coming over with support. So Bishop gets the completion. Gets it out to Riley, and then uh, Lawson holds him up while Denard and company come over. So Riley will have to try to pick up some of the slack uh, as uh, you saw Marshall going out. He's got four catches, 24 yards. He got into the end zone in the first half of this game. And Riley's still in there. First and 10. Bishop, quick pass again outside. Edwards. Edwards has room. Still on his feet. 
Edwards all the way down to the five yard line ran about 30 yards on the play but picks up the first down. Now we heard from Danny White at the half and, and what did he say? It's difficult when you're sitting on a, a big lead like yeah. this to, to play inspired football in the second half. And that's what's happening right now with the, the Utah Blaze. I can tell you Hunky Cooper is going crazy on that play because you could read that play from the very beginning. You knew where it was going, uh, that uh, Edwards was gonna get the ball in that quick slant and uh, they didn't make the adjustment on the fly uh, to that play. Well, and then to take that long to bring the man down. Uh, Marshall back in the game. They'll try it on the ground. A little pitch back. Well, that's clever, but they're going to rule he was down. But, hey, that's thinking on your knees. <laughs> nice job. Yeah, it almost right looked there. like you could design that play. By Chris Ryan. You know, they, they might end up putting that in the playbook. Yeah, I like that. They take a quick uh, handoff to Ryan, and Ryan is on his way down. Let's see if the knee was down. Uh, goes down right, right there. there. Yes, yeah. it was down, and then he tosses it to Bishop. And Bishop <laughs> probably could have gotten into the end zone for the touchdown. Oh, man, I like that. Third and two or third and six for a touchdown. Two for a first down. Marshall in motion on the left side. Bishop will keep. And Bishop will have the first down. But uh, again, a man who once rushed for over 100 yards in an AFL game, the only one to ever do that. You figure two or three yards for him is nothing. He had eight yards in the first half of this game. The Blaze doing a nice job led by that uh, guy right there, Ryan Denard, playing the Jack linebacker position, bottling up Michael Bishop. He did have one play where he got out uh, and got some yards, but it got called back because of a penalty. Well, you figure he's more dangerous when he runs after breaking containment rather than a designed running play. Flag is down. So this play, well, they're signaling touchdown, but... Flag is down and hold on. Could be a neutral zone violation here. Up nope, touchdown according to Michael Bishop. Illegal defense number there nine. There you go. Stacking on the defense. The penalty is applied. Score is good. And once again, Ryan Denard uh, a little bit out of position. Tricky, very tricky for the linebackers. You yeah, get into that tough. goal line situation. They're trying to anticipate and make their reads and they jump out of that box that they need to be in. Point after is good by Brian Gowan, so a couple of quick touchdowns by the Rampage in the second half. The Blaze still lead big, but Danny White said, hey, sometimes you worry when you have a big lead. We'll see if the Blaze can hold on when we come back. Two forty-three to play here in the third quarter, and the Utah Blaze probably one of the best efforts on both sides of the ball that we have seen in their young history, dominating 55-36. Now that last scoring drive, as you mentioned, Alema, probably did not make defensive coordinator Hunky Cooper happy. You go eight yards for or eight plays, forty-five yards, a very sustained drive, and he doesn't want to see that. Cooper is one of those guys that he watches so much game film and, and as we talked about you know his years in the league dominating 
uh, he, as a player. A, as a player, yeah. and he played that Jack linebacker position. And he said, when I step up the line, I know what the defense is going uh, to, or the offense is going to be running. I can make the adjustment on the fly. So when I watch these other guys, it drives me nuts. Onside kick. Justin Skaggs is there. And as you pointed out, there are a number of ways that teams use the onside kick. We saw the mule kick last week, a little squib kick. That was one where they try to put it up in the air and give it enough hang time for your kicking team to get over there. But Justin Skaggs, perfect guy. He's tall to have up there to haul it in. Skaggs uh, uh, shakes off the hit that came from number 18, Mark Redlinski. And the reason why you do that, you don't let, let the, the opposing team know that that, that hurt. That, that was the backup quarterback that made the hit on you on the outside oh. kick there. You don't want that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Two wide receivers over six feet tall for the uh, Blaze and Justin Skaggs and Aaron Boone, and they're both in the game now. Skaggs in motion and a little handoff to the left side. And uh, again, trying to be as kind as possible. Running has not really been the forte of this offense, but when you pass as well as they do, ah, what the heck. Clemens is uh, the, the leading rusher for the Blaze last year. Uh, the guy, he's an effective runner, but when you, number one, when you don't run that often, when you do implement the running play in the game, you're so rusty and you're trying yeah. to remember in your mind, okay, how, you know, what, what, what happens on this play? <laughs> Now wait, we where got, do I block? We got, we got two running plays Did you just call a running book. play? <laughs> Are you nuts? Boone in motion. Blaze going back to the air. Boone. Oh, there's a flag. There is a flag. No question about it. Angel Estrada. <laughs> we waiting all game for that. Got in the way of Boone. Our first real That's opportunity to call Estrada's the name. The defense. It's a 10 yard well, penalty. he really had no choice. It was touchdown. Down. They were actually just dancing with the stars right here. Look, I think yeah. they were doing the uh, the cha cha. Well, that'll be a half the distance spot, and we'll put the blaze at the eight yard line, first and goal, working on a 55 36 lead. At halftime, they were on pace to go over 80. And that's the difference between this year's team and last year's team. Last year, we saw them go over 80 once and lose. First and 10. First and goal, excuse me, for Joe Germain. That's Boone in motion. And Germain looking at Boone. Pressure and just throws it away. Probably a wise move. As Bruce Blue landed right on top of it. All 290 pounds. Blue spent uh, the majority of the camp this year during uh, during the preparation for the season with the Utah Blaze was one of the final cuts the Blaze made and the Grand Rapids uh, they quickly gobbled them up and brought them in. Second down and goal. Ball at the seven and a half yard line. Blaze is dominating 55-36 looking to add to that. Boone going in motion. Skaggs and Burley the other receivers. Jermaine. Jermaine looking, he's got a receiver, it's Boone, no one near him, touchdown, and that is three or two touchdowns for Aaron Boone, and seven for Joe Jermaine. Fire pitch celebrating on the other end of the field, Aaron Boone, his second touchdown of the game. hobbling just a little bit he's coming up that high ankle sprain and you know normally you come out you feel pretty good and then you're on this surface and it kind of wears and tears at you but uh, he was able to make his move started inside then broke it outside and now uh, i'm not sure i'm not sure if that's a congratulations from from danny white or uh, you, you got the touchdown even though you ran the wrong route <laughs> point after on the way and we'll <laughs> there you go. Point after is good. All right, now we'll go to break. Six different players have scored touchdowns. Three have scored at least two. Plays lead big.
tonight is sung by Motley Crue. Nice, One nice. of your favorite hair bands right Love there, them. Dave. Nice production. Joe Kruger, our, uh, the, the big boss in the truck. Keith Carlson put that together. Nice job. Very nice. Very nice job. And, and on a, you know what? On a game like this, you got a lot of product to work with. The Blaze completely dominating the rampage. 62 to 36. Steve Vitek to kick off once again. And beautiful. Right into the fire pit. I think Sia Burley got that one. <laughs> there's about there are so many Sia Burley. 20 Sia Burley uh, jerseys back there. There's a Jermaine. There's you know. an Oshwante. Oh, Oshwante Bryan with the you know the kickoff reception return there. Nice job. I, mean, I mentioned these jerseys. The reason there's so many yeah, jerseys is because they sponsor the youth conference football. It's amazing. And so all the kids get jerseys as part of their participation. Plus, the season ticket holders also got discounts on these jerseys. They're authentic jerseys. They're beautiful. I honestly have not seen so many foul balls batted down, by the way. Back into the hands of Bishop, who then throws it to someone wearing a jersey. <laughs> uh, honestly, I, I, I seriously, I have not been to a sporting event where there are more fans wearing the jersey of the home team. I, I don't see this with the Jazz, with the Utes, with the Cougars, anywhere. It's just unbelievable. We Flag is now. See what the penalty is here. They're having a discussion on wh what it could be. Actually, there's two different flags. There were two now. fouls on the play, both on the offense. <laughs> the legal four pass, number seven. That pill is declined. We have a personal foul, chop block, on number 92 on the offense. Half the distance to the goal, repeat first down. Well, the ref's walking the wrong way there. Hey, turn around there, pal. Or Shawante Bryant says, dude, where are you going? Other way. <laughs> Winfield Garnett getting uh, caught on the chop block. Six foot six, 320 pounds out of the Ohio State. Just like Joe Germain. Yeah, saw Sparky model. McEwen uh, setting in his play. Frustrating time. Yeah, the only team. good thing about this right now is that Bishop can run over to the yeah, sideline, get, get the play, right. and then come back in. Sparky McEwen, 10 and 25 in three years with this team. Bishop in his own end zone. Quick pass over the middle, caught by Marshall. Dangerous receiver. We've seen what a dangerous return man he is, and he has a first down up past the 15-yard line. Clock is ticking in the fourth quarter, and the Blaze have a huge lead. And Marshall's got to be getting tired because there's no question he is carrying the weight for this team. Marshall with uh, 93 yards receiving, uh, well over or close to 150 return yards, two touchdowns returning the ball, also has a touchdown receiving, so that's three on the night. Well, and we talked about him leading the league in all-purpose yards, and he is an all-purpose player. Deep pass. That was supposed to be one of those timing deals, but Jerome Riley didn't turn soon enough. Uh, 2,734 yards last year, all purpose for Tim Marshall. The man is just multi talented. You know, Hunky Cooper, he's up near the top in, in AFL history. Oh, yeah, no, no, he is. He's number two. He is, he is up there. Uh, Garrett Smith, nice pressure that time on. Michael Bishop, everybody is getting pressure on Bishop tonight. Garrett Smith of the University of Utah. There's a look at uh, the legendary Hernandez, Hunky Cooper. Second down, Bishop again. Again to Riley. Intercepted. Intercepted by Oswante Bryant out of bounds. There is a flag down at the line of scrimmage, but if this holds up, in and out of the hands of Jerome Riley, who has really not had soft hands tonight at all. Well, let's uh, see what the flag is holding on the defense. The interception will stand. First down, Utah. Great interception by our Schwante Bryant. That's the second on the night. Had one in the end zone in the yeah. first half. This one, just a great tip drill, goes in. And both of his interceptions in this game, I think you look at his ability as a receiver, and they're paying dividends while he's playing on defense. There's a lot of defensive backs out there. Ball is right in their hands, and they can't catch it. This one... Or Swante well, Bryant, both of his interceptions, pretty tough catches, but because he is a receiver on offense, able to haul him in. Well, the ball was in Riley's hand. <laughs> Actually, kind of hit him in the grill. First and ten for Joe Germain. Burley in motion. Quick pitch to the right side, and it's your buddy, Alveo. And how about that? That's the, that is the longest carry that's got to be of the season for the Utah Blaze. Couch eye Alveo. 
Let's take a look at this game summary brought to you by Altius Health Plans. People you'll like, health insurance you'll love. Utah scoring on nine of their ten possessions. And Tim Marshall for Grand Rapids. Two kick returns for touchdowns in this game. Utah has six different players that have gotten into the end zone. Kautai Olivao on that last play. Nice rushing play. Gain of eight yards. Their best rush so far of this game. Joe Germain, second and short, going for the end zone, looking for Boone. Boone. Boone has to play defender on that one because it was throwing a little inside. Almost an opportunity for Kevin Gaines to come up with an interception. Take a look at nice protection for Joe Germain and just good defensive coverage on that play. Nice job by Kevin Gaines. Right on top of Aaron Boone. And Boone did a, a good yeah, job making sure it wasn't intercepted. That'll bring up a third and short. And uh, they got to this position by running the ball. That's been their most effective play so far on this drive. Jermaine back to pass. He's got Burley. Burley, nice fake. Going to the end zone. Touchdown, Sia Burley. And that'll put Burley over 100 yards on the night. His third TD reception. Zaya Burley last year, of course, the offensive specialist that set all of the franchise expansion franchise records. Burley with the hitch and go, open in the end wow. zone. And it's a party. It's a party. It's yeah. a party over there in the fire pit. I, I just love it when, when not only do you get a ball fake, but the receiver puts a move on the defender, and you sell him a piece of property <laughs> that is like no other, and there was no way that play wasn't going to work after that. I even Hunky Cooper out there saying, nice, Zion Burley. Laser up big. I don't know what White was going on about. I don't know. I don't know, but the dog better get off the field. Catch it, catch it, Dave. Oh. <laughs> There's some youngsters down near the fire pit. I don't know if you want them to get too close to the Rowdies. Great group of, uh, a little core of just hardcore fire pit fans down in that end zone. And you don't want to be in that end zone when you're the receiving team. <laughs> but right now, Tim Marshall, although he's probably done his job tonight. It's the rest of the team that hasn't really helped out. Two touchdowns that Marshall has already scored for the Rampage on kickoff returns. For the Rampage trailing 69-36. It's been all blaze. And Marshall, no opportunity here. I'll tell you what, the, uh, the fire pits got four or five souvenirs tonight. You know, I think uh, there, were, there was a game last year where they gave out 28, not gave out, I mean, they, they, they lost up 20. The they lost 28 wow. footballs, and they were they were running pretty low. They, they were what? in that jeopardy of not having any left. Yeah, they, I mean, they don't have got secret supplies? stashes around, but, you know, you, wow. you get to the point where you lose 28 balls and $80 a pop, that's tough. 
Michael Bishop started out strong, seven uh, for seven. He had 42 yards in the TD. Then the pressure came, and he's crumpled under the pressure. 11 of 23 from that point on. Utah Blaze taking a timeout. Utah does the first choice timeout. You know what? They don't have enough players out there again. again. This is the second time tonight that's happened. The first time Justin Skaggs ran in late. This time, Kautai Alaveo runs in late. Steve Kanopka also Kanopka's coming also out onto the field. Out. I think Kautai's going back out. But. So a little, uh, a little mix up on the lineup or formations. Something that uh, Danny White and Hunky Cooper will try to sort out, no doubt. There's a look at Kanopka. He's a guy that they brought in this year as a uh, pass rushing specialist, along with Janik to put some pressure on quarterbacks. They have done their job, certainly tonight, rattling and containing Michael Bishop in this game because it's not just about getting pressure on Michael Bishop. you got to make sure that he doesn't break out of contain yeah. and pick up some yards. Well, we've seen him do it, and fortunately, there was a penalty that brought it back. All right, well, first and 10, Bishop at his five-yard line. That quick pass that's worked a couple times for him. Edwards. And Edwards, good yards, fumbles the ball right into the hands of Terrence Joseph. Turnover. Joseph still up, and he wants more. Joseph Buckley settles at the 20-yard line. Late flags coming in, and this is getting ugly. We've got a good old-fashioned brawl in their midfield. And I think you might see a couple of personal fouls. I'm looking over at the, uh, as we like to refer to it, the Blaze dugout, and, and Hans Olsen's trying to run out onto the field. Hunky grabbed him. You don't want to do that. Look now, at this. Still uh, John. Hunky Cooper getting uh, getting his players off. Tim Marshall has had a frustrating evening because oh, yeah. he's done everything he possibly can. Uh, he had one situation where he got popped in the face right underneath the chin strap, and I think it busted his chin strap. He was a little upset that there was no penalty called on that. So Marshall now making his way uh, over to the dugout for the Grand Rapids Rampage. And you got uh, you got Gesser in the game now. How about that? Maybe a little redemption for Jason Gesser. Wow. Tim Marshall goes to sit down. There are multiple foul plays. Personal foul, number 27 on the defense. Personal foul, number five on the offense. The field is offset. Utah's ball first down. Oh, there you go. So we're pushing and shoving just to let the anger out, and everybody's okay. And that's what it's been. It's been Lawson and uh, Marshall going at it. But take a look. The ball pops wow. out, and great job by Terrence Joseph with the presence of mind to get the ball. Marshall tries to bring him down. He can't do it. Some nice blocks, and as he's running around, there's all kinds of blocks going on. Crack back blocks, and guys getting knocked down. Marshall then oh. comes in, and it was Lawson who came in with the late hit, <laughs> upset at the late hit on Joseph. But nonetheless, oh, plays ball with a 69 to 36 lead. Okay. 
69-36. Apparently that's enough for Joe Germain, who's going to go to the bench. And Danny White puts in his backup, Jason Gesser, to finish things off. So a good opportunity for this young man to get some playing time. As the Blaze have looked absolutely fantastic on both sides of the ball. Of course, they have the ball now because of an interception, their fourth turnover of the game. Justin Skaggs in motion again. Jason Gesser out of the University of Washington State. Or I guess it's just Washington State University. <laughs> yeah, Wazoo Sorry. would be it. Wazoo. You know, last year when Gesser played, he had five interceptions. Turnovers were a problem, but tonight, completely different. Yeah, there's a fumble recovery by Ryan Denard. A couple of interceptions in this game for Orswante Bryant, the second one right there. And then how about this? Another fumble recovery, a bizarre one. And this one by Terrence Joseph and TJ running all over the field a couple of penalties at the end of this play as Lawson and uh, Marshall kind of getting into it you know it's plays like that that just I mean if you haven't been to a game in person it is just so much fun there is so quick so much action going on and I think plays like that just completely and, and totally illustrate just what a great game this is Jason Gesser quick pass outside so he opens up by handing the ball off then a very nice quick safe pass outside Obviously, they're trying to give him an opportunity to build up some confidence and work his way into this play. Well, everybody wants to talk about that game against Grand Rapids, but uh, and and he was uh, over as a starter for the Utah Blaze. But Gesser has steadily improved and has gotten better uh, during the off season. And I I think that Gesser is going to be just fine in this league. In fact, I'm a big fan because he's from Hawaii. <laughs> that might have something to uh, do with it, but hey. Gesser, pump fake. Oh, he's got he's got a touchdown Burley. Beautiful pump fake. Play score again. What, what do you think, Dave? There's room on my bandwagon. Climb aboard, the, baby. The Gesser bandwagon. <laughs> Gotta love the kid. Plays with a lot of passion and emotion. A little bit different from from Joe Germain. Very, they call Joe, you know, calm, cool, and collected. The ice, you know, ice water in his veins. Uh, yes, sir. A little more celebratory when he gets his team into the end zone. I like his style. The pride of St. Louis High School in Honolulu, Hawaii. And the holder kick is up after one after his good Vitek. And how? about Oh man, 76 to 36. Are the Blaze up by 40? Wow. Look at this, 76 to 36, complete domination. There's Hunky Cooper talking with his players. He's got to be a happy guy because this team was, shall we say, we'll just say 19. I, you know, I asked him before the game tonight. You know, I kind of moseyed on up to him, you know, as he was on the field and the game was team was going through their pregame. I said, uh, feeling any pressure on the team? He goes, ah, no, no, I'm not feeling any pressure. Uh, the points being scored. Ah, no, 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 no. But but then, then he got into it. He said, we're getting three, maybe four stops tonight. 
Yeah, and he'd, he'd had it. His defense has responded. He had completely had it. The one bright spot for the Rampage is Marshall, and here he comes again. Marshall gets outside. Flag is down, and he's brought down at the 15-yard line. I told you before that Hunky had told me that being a defensive coordinator, and I love, I love his theory in the AFL, is like you're going hunting, but the rabbit's got the gun. <laughs> yes. But tonight, it has been completely different. He is hunting with all the weapons. Holding number 16 on the return team. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Boy, I tell you, when it, when it rains, it pours. This team, this team just can't catch a break. And they're down by 40 with 652, 650 clock running. The play. Nine penalties for the Rampage, and there have been several against the number 16, Troy Edwards, for the Rampage. Well, Michael Bishop out of Kansas State, former Heisman runner-up, tries to get some going. Intercepted! Burley! Or excuse me, Ashanti Bryant. Touchdown, Blaze, again! Are you kidding me? Three picks tonight for Ashanti Bryant. I said that was early just, at first, he's already got four touchdowns. Bryant now gets on the scoreboard. And that was thrown right at him. Great read, breaks on the ball, and nothing but end zone in front of him. This is just, uh, <laughs> it's incredible. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know if I've seen too many AFL games that have been dominated quite like this. There was one a couple weeks ago that involved New York. Benetech's point after is good. And the Blaze are up 83 to 36. Six minutes to play out here at the Energy Solutions Arena. And, Alema, this has been an unbelievable night. Utah, 82 points. <laughs> no, and dare no, we no. even suggest... Well, they'll, they'll probably, I, I'm sure, pass this. But could they break a hundy? That would be the first time ever. Never been done in the Arena Football League. As crazy as that sounds, in 21 years, no team has scored 100. Normally, and there are some people that are leaving Energy Solutions Arena, and I would say, don't, don't leave do yet. You never know that. what could happen, but I think that this lead is safe. And I said 82. I don't know why, but the scoreboards here are always so late. It still says 82, but we know it's 83. My mistake. And uh, we'll correct it on our scoreboard as well, that it is 83 to 36 with 554 to go and There's the last the touchdown uh, of course was thrown a touchdown pass thrown to the blaze by uh, michael bishop right into the hands of the awaiting oshwante bryant and bishop still in there and still battling and i i'll tell you alema it's got to be frustrating when you are at this point down by this many points and you've still got to go out there and try to get things done and bishop's got that in front of him Bishop, quick pass outside, and met immediately. Look at Bryant, he wants some more. He throws that ball half a second later, and it's another touchdown. I'll tell you what, you know, Hunky Cooper, the defensive coordinator for the Utah Blaze, challenged his defense this week. And they were coming off a short week because they played on Sunday. Yeah. But he told his guys, look, you know, I played in this league when I, I played an entire season, made $11,000. You guys make that in three games. They said, you better show me something. Man, they, they've showed them something tonight. They definitely have another quick pass outside. And 
I mean, there are so many bad things that have happened to this Rampage offense because of the Blaze defense that here they are down by a bundle, and yet they're just playing conservative ball. I mean, they're almost playing to avoid another turnover. <laughs> Troy Edwards walks up to Ryan Denard after the hit just to and Ryan doesn't even care. He's like, I, I'm, I'm done with that. <laughs> I've, I've moved on. <laughs> Riley, the motion man. First down for Michael Bishop. Bishop looking deep. Almost intercepted again. Clarence Lawson had it right in his mitts. And another souvenir for the fans up there near the 10 yard line. Oh, look at that. They Lawson that not like or Schwante Bright, not a two-way player. This is why he is a defensive right. specialist because he, he didn't make that catch. But a nice job nonetheless by Clarence Lawson, the former University of Utah standout defensive back. Well, Michael Bishop's got to, uh, he's going to have a long week, that's for sure. No, and he fumbles the ball. And then Lance, I'm telling you, it's just nothing is going right for this Rampage team, and the Blaze fans got to just be loving it. Clemens was in there to uh, cover Bishop on the fumble. Let's take a look at the Cameron Construction hard hat hit of the game and listen as well. Oh. Now there was a penalty issue, but hey, what the hell? <laughs> Denard on Bishop right into the dash report. Third down, Bishop under pressure. Bishop almost sacked, gets out of the pressure. Body brought down, fumble, scooped up by Ryan, and look at him rumble. Are you kidding me? Ryan rumbles for a touchdown. Get him some oxygen, but Chris Ryan, I guarantee that's the longest carry of his career. <laughs> wow. Well, something comes up nice for the Rampage, but they are still woefully behind but another reason arena football is so entertaining to watch bishop breaks out of the pocket ryan six foot 305 pounds picks up the bouncing ball and then he rumbles himself Rumbling. the rest of the way into the end zone for the td and i'm spent <laughs> point after on the way ryan goins oh and missed so it will stay 83 to 42 Sparky not happy. Oh, Sparky is dealing. not happy. And it's going to be a long plane ride home and a great night for the Blaze. An important one. They got a couple road games coming up. So for them to be able to move their record to three and one with such a dominating performance, very important. Mikey Cooper with the kicking team surrounding him has to be a happy guy. Well, I don't know if we should start counting this up, but hey, uh, Lem a couple touchdowns. And they could get to that point. Group, yeah. 99 points, the most ever scored in the arena football game back in 2001. New York Dragons. Uh, New Jersey got 91 and 97. And San Jose, 89 in 2005. And there's a couple of guys. Hans Olsen, along with Joe Germain and Cyber. They all want to see this team get to the century mark. I think with 2.33 to play, that's going to be tough. And I don't know that Danny White's going to come out and throw deep every play. <laughs> he, he, this guy, he's, he's patting himself down. He's sweating he's so hard. Beat. He's cheering. He's cheering hard. <laughs> he's exhausted. <laughs> Sia Burley back to receive the kick. Assuming Brian Goins kicks it away. I don't know if you benefit yeah, really you from an bother, outside yeah. here. Down 40 plus points. Your risk reward factor yeah. is not in favor of you. <laughs> Kick is away. And Burley's got it. And Burley. Burley's got a hole. Burley to the right side. The kicker is in his way. And he's brought down. He's slowed down by the kicker before he is finally brought down by Jerome Riley. But a nice kick return inside the 15-yard line, 40 yards. So maybe the Blaze will at least have an opportunity to move up on the top three scores list. Sia Burley, what a game he has had tonight. Four touchdowns receiving, 10 receptions, 134 yards. He's had some great returns. That's his second one that he's taken out to the 15-yard line. He had another one that he returned out to the 23-yard line of Grand Rapids. He's just had a, a great night. Well, Jason Gesser has been playing in relief after Joe Germain did his job. And a quick handoff inside will go for about four yards. Cow tie on the carry. And a good time for us to take a second and congratulate 
our MVT brought to you by Intermountain Harley-Davidson, Utah's leading Harley-Davidson dealership. And Alema, I think we agree that you know, Danny White told us at halftime how efficient Joe Germain really is. Yeah, right now, 20 of 29, 268 yards, eight touchdowns on the game. Wow. They took him out midway through uh, the fourth quarter. And he has just been lighting it up and distributing the ball to a bunch of different guys. You got five different receivers with receiving touchdowns. There's the big kid out of Kahuku High School on the north shore of Oahu. Kahuku High. The Red Raiders right uh, there. They're all, they're, these are just all your buddies, aren't they? <laughs> Kao Tai uh, And this is the uh, uh, Danny White being uh, gracious, keeping the ball on the ground as the clock runs down to one minute to go. And, of course, it will stop at one minute. And we'll take a break. The play's complete domination. Eighty-three to forty-two, a complete shellacking on the part of the Blaze. Joe Germain, we haven't seen him out here for about twenty minutes because he did so well. Our MVP, Jason Gesser from Hawaii, has taken over. Third down, they ran the first two plays, keep that clock running. Now inside a minute, it will stop on incomplete passes. Gesser looking, Gesser in trouble. Gesser just throws it away. The pride of St. Louis High School. Flag on the play. We'll take a look at the schedule while yeah. they figure out what the laundry is about. Yeah, and a very, very important win, I think, too, to go to 3 and 1 Alema with two big road games coming up. Taking on Las Vegas. They'll be at Las Vegas and then at Austin. And then they'll return home to take on LA. And then they've got Arizona, the Rattlers. That That'll is be their our rival. Next game. Yeah. I tell you what, the Rattlers are not happy with the Blaze. If you had a chance to see it, the uh, Blaze, very good game against Arizona. So now Benetech will come in, try to put uh, a field goal. Now Benetech has struggled. He's one and three so far this season on field goals. So this would be a nice chance. He is the leading, all time leading scorer for kickers in the Arena Football League. And he missed it. And this, can, this is returnable. And Vitatex there to push him out of bounds. How about that? Vitatex gets downfield before anyone else can. Kevin Gaines takes it off the net, returns it out to about the 14 yard line. Vitatex just one of four on field goals this week. He hasn't been, been very effective on yeah. field goals, but, but even then, he makes up for, for all of that with the, his kickoffs and what he does uh, in that part of the game. But I don't think there's anybody more upset with him uh, with Vinatek than Steve Vinatek is. You know, you yeah. see him over there on the sideline with his helmet off. He's a little dis discouraged, disappointed with himself. He knows he's better than that. His team's up 41, and he's... <laughs> it's not like it was a crucial <laughs> field goal or anything. He can't believe he missed that. Oh, dear. Michael Bishop, the quarterback, the new quarterback for the Rampage, actually on his second tour with his team. They acquired him from Kansas City, but he's had a rough night. Pump fake, quick pass, and... That kind of sums up the night for the Grand Rapids Rampage. In and out of the hands right there of Ronnie Daniels. And these guys, uh, they're hearing footsteps. Uh, Utah, the Blaze, they set the tempo early on. And 
They came hard with tackling and, and bringing the hat and and gang tackling the whole thing, and it, it, it set the tempo early on. And now guys are having a hard time focusing on just catching the ball. Second down. Bishop in trouble. Bishop sacked. Kanopka. How about that? This defense has been nothing short of sensational. That might be the end of the game. There's no reason to run another play. And it has been sensational for the Blaze, offensively and defensively. They have completely come in here and taken control. Michael Bishop will go out there and Look shake hands. It's done. How about that? Very rough night for that young man, but I would suspect that he has a lot of respect for this Utah Blaze defense. There's Chris Janik right there. He's got uh, France all over the league having played for a number of different teams uh, during his tour in the Arena Football League. He's been uh, around for going on seven years now. There's some fans that are happy, those some that stuck, stuck around. Well, the fans that have stuck around definitely entertain. Actually, you're entertained the entire night. This was just a, a wonderful game to watch. A lot of a lot of fun side stories with some of the hitting going on between the defensive players. Uh, or Shante Bryant, of course, coming up with the interceptions. The offense of Sia Burley that was so big. And this Joe Germain, of course, leading them all along the way. There he is now. There's a look at Joe Germain through for eight touchdowns in this game. Germain having another sensational night for the Utah Blaze. And he had a 10-touchdown performance already this season. Now he has another eight-touchdown performance uh, in this game tonight. Uh, will be uh, continue to be one of the leaders uh, as far as passing for the Arena Football League. And we we mentioned that he was the MVP of the game, but there's no question that Sia Burley yeah. uh, was a major contributor in this game. In fact, it was almost the battle of the all-purpose guys. Sia Burley for the Utah Blaze, 134 yards receiving, and return yards, 131 yards. And well, then his all-purpose total is 265. On the other side, you got Tim Marshall, two returns for touchdowns. He's got 93 yards receiving, 134 yards uh, in returns. Well, and you have to give a little piece of the MVP to the entire defense. We'll take a break as the teams gather together to wrap things up. Huge win for the Blaze. We'll be back. You don't have Goodhine's cell number in here, do you? Uh, well, just to give it to me. 637163. What do you got there? 6337163. Then you hit talk. Yeah. Where, does, where would he need to take him? Over to the other side, right? That, that, that's our guy. Hey, that's right our there. guy. That's our guy. That's your guy. Maybe he's going to take him over there. Yeah, he is. He is. He is. Sweet. We'll have Jermaine. They're setting him up. Beautiful. Oh, you could be our victim, huh, Joe? I'll use that. Okay, 20 of 29, 268, eight touchdowns. This is later. Right, but later. Okay. So we're going to come back on camera and then throw straight down and interview Joe. Okay, very good.
Welcome back to Energy Solutions Arena. What a great night to be a Blaze fan or a Blaze player. 83 to 42. Blaze go to 3 and 1 now on the year. 2 and 0 oh in this building. Big win and great performances on both sides of the ball. Dave Fox, Alema Harrington, and we're going to go right down on the football field because one of the stars, in fact, our MVP, Joe Germain, is standing by live right now. And first of all, Joe, before we get to how great the offense was, you got to be particularly pleased how great your defense was. Oh, you hit the nail on the head. Our defense played tremendous tonight. You know, and we've, we've said all along, all along, even though they may have struggled just a little bit, you know, early in the season, there, there's not a, a group uh, that works harder than our defense. They put so many hours into preparation, and it's going to pay off, and they did tonight. Joe, for you and the offense tonight, you throw for uh, eight touchdowns. And you get everybody involved. I talked with you before the game and, and asked you about that stretch that you had where you had 25 receptions uh, in a row, and you said it had to do with rhythm. You got guys that are coming in and out of the lineup, including Boone right now. Uh, how do you keep that rhythm going? Well, you, you know, with, with the exception of Aaron Boone, all, all the rest of the guys, we've worked together for, for quite a long time. So we've... Uh, you know, we've, we've, uh, we've thrown, to, thrown to each other quite a bit, so we have that rhythm. But Aaron, you got to tip your hats in. He's come in first time with this group, and, and he's, he's picked up right where everyone is, uh, has, uh, has started. And, um, you know, it, it is a rhythm thing, and they did a great job tonight of just uh, making a bunch of catches, and we spread it around a lot. So that's only going to help us uh, down the line. Joe, you just mentioned you spread it around a lot. There are a lot of guys that are going to be buying you dinner. <laughs> Six different blaze men scored touchdowns tonight for your offense i'll tell you what it starts with those uh those those big guys up front and that's who uh that's who we really should buy dinner for yeah they, they, you buy them dinner <laughs> i might need some help i might need some help you know you got olsen and Manai. those guys they, 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 they can eat a bunch i bet so i might need some help buying those guys dinner you know joe last year this team in its inaugural season made it to the playoffs but struggled winning games here at home in energy solutions arena now this year you guys have found a way so far to be undefeated in this arena was there a concerted effort to make sure that something happened where that that was accomplished or is just a, a part of this team playing better this year well i think i think both things we've uh i think you know we got just a year of experience under our belt so you know we think we're we're a better team than we were last year especially with some of the additions that we made this off season but um you know this home crowd we we take it personal when we when uh, when we play here and and we have such a great fan base and great ownership and we know how much it means to them to to, uh, to come here and, and, and to put a good team on the field, and, so, and we definitely want to win here for them. Joe, one more quick question before we let you go. I think this this win not only important just for the fact you go to 3-1, and one, but you got two games in a row again on the road. You just came off a, a two-game road trip. Tell me how important this is when you've got to go out there again. Uh, Vegas and Austin. You know what? Next week is huge. Um, you know, this is a good win. We'll enjoy this one for today, and and uh, we do have a couple extra days this week to, to, to prepare and, and rest some guys that, that are uh, maybe a little nicked up. But it's another division game with, with Vegas, who's playing pretty well. And, and we have to go to their place, which is, uh, which is tough to play there. So we, uh, we got our work cut out for us. It just keeps on. And it's a never ending. All right, Joe Germain, our game MVP. Thanks for being with us, Joe. Go give your defense a big pat on the back as well. Thank and, you, guys. Uh, we'll watch you next week in Vegas. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. The Blaze come up with a, just a huge victory. We'll take a break. Come back, Dave Fox and Alema Harrington to wrap things up for you as the Blaze win it 83 to 42. to the sideline yeah they're, I think they're going after him yeah yeah, yeah. their point they're, there you go let's get him okay Bryant Bryant's he had the two interceptions two interceptions and one for a touchdown. one for a touchdown okay. plus uh, here he comes uh, well he didn't play much on offense this this week. no but that's okay because we need to talk yeah. about defense get the headset on him <clears throat> Welcome back to Energy Solutions Arena. Big victory for the Blaze, 83-42. to 42. We talked with the offensive star, of course, Joe Germain. I hate to say star, but there were a lot of stars on sure. offense, and there were a lot on defense. You had mentioned that Hunky Cooper challenged this defensive unit, Alema. 
And one of them is down on the field right now, Orswante Bryant. Orswante, uh, three interceptions in this game tonight. He didn't play much on offense, didn't get into the end zone on offense, but you got <laughs> it done on defense, and it had to feel great because this defense really needed this game. Yes, uh, I mean, we were looking forward to this game, and we knew that uh, we had something to prove on defense. We've allowed our offense to carry us this whole time. Uh, the last three games, and so now it was t uh, time to step up for the defense, and that's exactly what we did. And uh, the coaches prepared very well, and Coach Coop allowed us to uh, to play games uh, on our own, and uh, and we got a chance to jump a couple balls. Okay, now I, you know, the ball you intercepted, you looked like a wide receiver, but it looked to me like there were a couple of guys. I don't want to start a fight here, <laughs> but I think Lawson had one right in his hands. So apparently, he doesn't get enough time on the offside. <laughs> offensive side. It really helps when you play both sides of the ball a lot, doesn't oh, it? Oh yeah, I've been playing receiver for a long time, so uh, hopefully most of the balls. That come my way you know I'll go ahead and grab uh, that's what coach white told me he said you playing defense now you got some offensive hands so you should be grabbing at least two or three of them or Schwante Bryant with three interceptions in this game and and you know we're taking a look at some of the highlights tonight and it was the defensive line putting some pressure on Michael Bishop and once he got rattled that kind of opened things up and opportunities start to happen for the defensive backfield yes uh, I mean like I said coach Coop uh, went on ahead and made some changes this week after last week's game and uh, he, he, he made sure that we got, got a chance to get to the quarterback, and he gave our, our linemen a free go to do that, and also our, our mag, uh, backer, and, and that, that just allowed us to put a little more pressure on him and allowed us the DBs to come out and do what they're supposed to do best, and that's cover a receiver. All right, Orishwante, Brian, thanks for being with us. A couple of interceptions tonight, one for a touchdown. You hit the road now for a couple. We appreciate you being with us tonight. Thank Big you very win. much. Yeah, Congratulations. Appreciate it. Well, let's take a look at the stats, uh, and they are plentiful. On the blade side <laughs> of the ball, the uh, final stats brought to you by Sports Medicine of Utah, located at Salt Lake Community Medical Center. Any athlete, any time. Passing yards, got 313 yards. That's a combination between uh, Joe Germain as well as Jason Gesser, who got in there in the end and threw a touchdown pass to Sia Burley. Turnovers were key for the Utah Blaze, getting five turnovers in this game, which is an exact reversal of what happened last year when they played at Grand Rapids. They uh, they get the ball back five times, uh, the defense does, for their offense, and then offense capitalizing on it. Time of possession uh, really in favor of the Grand Rapids Rampage in this game because once the offense got on the uh, on the field for the Blaze, they, they put the ball, ball yeah, in the end hurry. zone. Isn't it ironic? Five turnovers we see there on the stats. And last year, it was the Blaze that had the five turnovers against Grand Rapids. Although in that game, they only lost by 10. Yeah, it wasn't a dominating uh, effort by the Grand Rapids last year like this final score. 83-42. to 42, And you know, we put the stat up. There was a chance that the Blaze could have put up 100 points yeah. or at least gotten to 99, which would have tied the record. Well, I think Danny White obviously came out. And he was somewhat gracious because they, they ran the ball a few times there. But you're right. They probably could have. They could have at least gotten into the top three scoring in the history of the mm -hmm. league but just a sensational effort all the way around you know we talked about the performance already by joe germain he had 10 touchdowns already in the game this season then he had that stretch yep. where he had 25 completions which stretched from one game to the next game two to game three and then tonight eight touchdowns in this game didn't even play the whole game he, he's been fantastic it was a thrilling night in the energy solutions arena the blaze did not disappoint complete domination as they rout the rampage 83 to 42 for our entire crew along with Alema Harrington. I'm Dave Fox. Thanks for joining us for tonight's broadcast. Utah Blaze, big winners.